Okay, it's um, seven o'clock, so we will make a start. Um, thank you very much for coming to the um, annual council meeting, and I think it's our first council meeting um, of, the, of the parish council in Haydedge Band Hall, to my to my knowledge. So I must admit it's my first time in the building. So um, thank you to Haydedge Band Hall for accommodating us. Uh, obviously, designed for a band, you would hope the acoustics are pretty good. But for the sake of the recording and for the sake of everyone being able to hear, if you can all speak up um, clearly when you want to speak and obviously raise, raise your hand so that, um, so that I can see who's, who's ready to speak. So without further ado, we will start with um, public question time. And I know we've got um, Julia and Peter from The Honley Show. Can I just check, are there any councillors who want to raise something in public question time? Okay, um, Councillor Bustard, Councillor Dixon. Okay, well, we'll start with... Um, on O oh, and Councillor Dawn. Okay, right. So since each each party has three minutes, um, we'll we'll start off with um, Julia and Peter from the Honley Show, um, and then we'll we'll move on to the, the three of you in in turn. So, so over to you, Julia and Peter. Okay, okay. Right, I'll go first. Uh, I'm presuming that everybody here knows that Honley Show. It's kind of been a, a, a pillar of the local community for the last 100 years. And one of the reasons we're here to talk to you is because we've actually got a centenary event this year. Um, slightly different to the normal show. The normal show is obviously a full-blown agricultural show, you know, very important in the Yorkshire agricultural calendar. Um, we felt there was too much risk involved in getting marquees for cattle, marquees for sheep, and doing a full-blown show with all of the um, competition elements that would normally um, entail. So this year, we just didn't want to miss our centenary event by the man in the, in the foyer. We didn't want to miss our centenary event. Um, it wouldn't be the same to have it next year and say Honley shows 101st yeah, year, just not the same. So we decided to change the events. No large animals, no large marquees, but animal representation, because what we're all about is educating uh, kids and the community into the um, the ways of the, the rural life and agriculture. Um, should be allowed to get, get thrown by people coming in, but never mind. Um, so, back to Holly Cricket Club, where it started in August 27, 1921. We've got the Cricket Club and the Rec. As I said, we've got, we've got bands, we've got music, we've got 1921 fancy dress. We have got animal representation everywhere. We've got our usual sponsors, Morehouse, Longley Farm, Belong involved. Um, and we already have the trade stands full. So it's ticking a lot of boxes in terms of outreach to the local community. The business community is so on board that there's now a waiting list for the trade stands. Um, the agri agricultural community is taking a bit of a back seat this year because we haven't got the, the large marquees. Um, schools are always heavily involved and they come forward. It, uh, this year they'll be coming forward in the handicraft section. But we're also having races and the Hope Firth Harriers on the school that's adjacent to the rec and uh, the cricket club. So we wanted to work with you on it, you wanted to work with us on it, um, you want to outreach to the people that we reach. Um, it seems like a really, really, you know, we'd love to work with you, it seems like a really good opportunity. I'm quite surprised we haven't had this conversation before. Yeah, it seems yeah, overdue. Um, so there's a couple of things we thought you, you know, that you could sponsor for us to help us this year. Um, we discussed a number of things, but one of the things that we're talking to you about now is the programme. So every year we have a, a programme like these. Um, this year, this will be the creative on the front or some rework of it. Um, we'd like that to say, sponsored by the kind help from Home Valley Parish Council on the front. Um, we'll probably use them as posters in shops. So you, know, you will be well represented, pushed out into the community, being seen to be linked with, you know, a much loved local agricultural show in its centenary year. Is okay. that three minutes? Okay, think? yeah, that's that's the three three thank minutes. You. So thank you very much for that. As councillors would have seen, you've got there's an agenda item in the um, in the meeting pack for the um, grant application associated with it. So um, subject to the, there's various things that we need to discuss before we can bring that item forward. Um, so thank you thank you very much for that. Unless anyone's got any burning questions that can't wait until the, the discussion of the grant application, we will we'll move on. I know a member of the public just, just came in. Yeah. Okay, are you wanting to speak in our 
Yeah, Public yeah, session? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, well, we'll start with, we've got a couple of other people who are, who are speaking first and then, then we'll, we'll come to you. Okay, um, Councillor Buster, do you want to speak as a member of the public? Yes, yes, I do. So um, I've sent an email to all of the councillors in advance of the meeting. Uh, what I wanted to raise is the Yorkshire Motorsports Festival and to request that the council convenes an extraordinary meeting to discuss this. Uh, as I understand from Rachel, it's not possible given the schedule of the agenda today that we don't have time to discuss it, but I do feel it's important. Uh, the reason for that is that it is a condition of the event licences for Yorkshire Motorsport Festival. These are the licences granted by Kirklees Council and Motorsports UK that the event has the full support of the Parish Council following consultation of businesses and residents. My understanding is that the event was discussed in outline at the Planning Standing Committee in March 2020 with a resolution to commend to the full Council and that questions were raised. The information was requested from Kirklees Council and the event organisers, but that information was never provided. Um, I have also um, made inquiries to Kirklees Council and have had none of this information provided either. Um, I, I just feel that it's odd and it's remiss that without a full discussion that any perceived or actual full support should be provided to an event of this scale and kind. It is very typical, and I don't know whether you know what I do as a living, but I'm a consultant for major event planning. I sit on a cross-sector industry board specifically for large-scale public events, and I've also worked in motorsport, so I know the legislation what this does very well. It's very typical that a parish councillor's representative is part of the Safety Advisory Group and provided with written uh, <laughs> documentation, specifically in relation to these types of events, including traffic management planning, considering the level and scale of access, so an event of 50,000 people going into Wallstones would be a major impact. It's significantly larger than the population. You would also expect access roads, flow rates, socio-economic and environmental impact studies. I believe none of this has been done or provided. My also my understanding is there was no COVID plan provided in advance of the event until three days prior. Due to that being raised due to Kirklees. So my, my, my questions are that, that even at a capacity, a reduced capacity this year of 2,000 people, um, it did have an impact on business and residents. Complaints have been raised and I believe that we've got a right and a, a, and a responsibility to discuss it as a group uh, and to have an informed view uh, rather than offering any sort of blanket support uh, to this. So, so, so that's, that's what I'm raising. <coughs> I'm happy to write a paper for it, happy to share all of the uh, complaints that have been forwarded to me, the legislation, uh, and all the guidance. Um, that's it, really. I'm very okay. disappointed, to be frank, that this hasn't done before, been done before. For it to be raised in March 2020, and the idea that we can only have the time to discuss this in October 2020 21 isn't functioning. And whilst I appreciate that COVID's had a massive impact on people's lives, um, I attended a meeting where we discussed the dry stone hall, and I've listened to more stuff about cleaning toilets and, and, dry, and dog messages stuffed in walls and you talk about poo and weave on my kids. So I think uh, we, we could start to get stuck into stuff that's important and I think this should be on the agenda. That probably is more than three minutes. Okay. Thank you for that. Right, in terms of that, uh, moving forward, as um, Councillor Busters has outlined, we weren't able to discuss it tonight due to the volume of um, other things on the agenda. So. Uh, I would propose that we do have a, an extraordinary meeting to discuss the Yorkshire Motorsports um, Festival and our, um, the, the residents' input on it. Um, and I would suggest that we have that after our planning meeting in two weeks' time. So, does anyone like to second that? No, I'd like to ask a question. Well, I'd, I'd, we haven't got time to have a discussion on it. It's, a, it's not on the no, agenda, so we're not going to have a discussion about to, it. Just as a matter of record, yeah. we have discussed this since 20 in a full council meeting and councillor Dalton so on record on YouTube so can we just make sure that's in the record okay all right but can I, so, okay, can I put for, I'd, we don't have time to have a big discussion about it now, so, so I would propose that we have an extraordinary meeting at which all these issues can be, can be raised and we can um, hear what um, Councillor Bustard has to say and obviously others on the Parish Council and give a, um, decide how we wish to take it forward. So can I, um, someone second that? Are you seconding it? Councillor Brooke, thank you. So all those in favour of that approach? Thank you. Okay, that's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the next uh, councillor who wished to speak in public session, it was Councillor Dixon. Uh, <coughs> Madam Chairman, I think it's uh, 
rather brilliant that the first AGM um, to be taken outside the council chambers is held in the best ward in the whole valley. Um, I think that was a very, very good case. Uh, I think Mary will agree on that. Uh, to be done to be for the people of Aid Edge had never been on the council, and that was a two part. Um, the one thing, though, that bothers me is that we're pumping what we said we would do, monies into the city hall. We said we would do it, we've agreed to do it, it is within our budget to do this. But we're paying a large rent, more than anybody else, for what we have down there. I don't think it's in order that the people running it can't go out of the way <coughs> to provide us with the service. Due to COVID, we've got to be socially distancing. We know all about this. If we'd have gone and waited another week, we may not have needed it. But it upsets me that this council have been told by the people that are running, could they have not just had one week without uh, an event or put the event uh, an hour sooner or an hour later and let us have the lower city call. Um, it's not on, uh, but granted, it's costing the ratepayers money to come here. I don't think we'll have got this for nothing. Um, and I don't like to see money wasted when we're spending so much money and doing so much for the city call, which is what we wanted to do, which what we have agreed to do, what we know we've got to honour, but to have to uh, bow down to somebody having uh, a once a week e pick class uh, is more important than the parish council, and I'm not uh, at all happy with that. Okay, thank you for those comments, Councillor Dixon. Um, and they're obviously noted, um, and I think that it may be thought about in the committee that will be looking after the um, relationship with the with the civic hall moving forward. Okay, so um, Councillor Dalton, you wish to speak under public open session? Yeah, uh, I'm not too sure about the uh, first uh, council meeting outside of the civic hall and the uh, nature of the uh, relevant parishes, but Brockholes, uh, where we met last in the last meeting, is a fantastic parish. Um, just as a matter of record, this building was designed in 2006 by yours truly and uh, is a relatively new structure and it is a fantastic addition to the area and uh, I'm glad to hear the acoustics are good. The matter I wanted to raise um, uh, is a matter that many, many parishioners have contacted me about and you may, I don't go on Facebook, but you may have heard wind of this and it's to do with the erection of an 18 metre mast at the top of Hayes Road at its junction with uh, New Mill Road. Um, uh, there's many, pre many uh, reasons why this isn't a good idea, but it follows on from uh, the planning, planning uh, application that was put in uh, as, a, as a broad brush two years ago in 2019, which I raised objections to at the time. We didn't have an environmental impact study from uh, Kirklees Council, who were basically telling us that any 5G apparatus being put up in the Home Valley would be given a, a nod through on the, on, the, on, the, on the same. I asked at the time where the environmental impact study was, none, none was forthcoming, and we're now in a situation two years down the road where reality is striking and they're uh, proposing to put a, complete, in a completely inappropriate place. Um, which the, ob the objectors have put their objections in but I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback on this issue uh, and the council needs to be a lot, a lot stronger there are all sorts of mitigating measures that can be done on the visual impact of uh, the erection of that mass uh, if, if it does indeed have to go ahead but the council needs to be a bit more proactive in backing up the community in objecting to the mast uh, the 18 metre mast uh, at uh, the top of Hayes Road Thank okay, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Dalton. I think it should be noted that that um, particular mast has come before the planning committee, and comment has been been given as part of part of that that meeting. Um, so obviously, we'd we'd urge people who do have 
concerns about it to raise those with Kirtley's, Kirtley's planning. But your, your views are noted. Thank you for that. Right, um, I think now uh, Richard Slack. Yes, yeah. I'm right, so we've got, got three minutes, Richard, please. You can come to the front if you like, and then it's oh, right, easier to be heard, perhaps. <laughs> Um, if it's good, the first delay, like, and then um, also uh, don't let the protocol be asking questions or referring to people to operate the evening, uh, everybody. I'm a local resident in Hay Hedge, um, and I'd like to bring up the funding that we've got already in the bank, I believe, £250,000 um, to direct the third S106 agreement and change the junction at the bottom of here. Now you've got the thing open tonight, the door open, you'll hear cars go past, it's 30 limit, um, it's combining them all together. And I'd like to put to everybody that when the words, there's nothing worse than, there's nothing worse to me than a child's death, which will happen, it's not <coughs> if, it's when. Now, um, I would like to thank the uh, <coughs> Patrick for securing the funding and the service Ms. Firth have been uh, involved with it. Um, I believe it's been shelved at the moment. Um, I'm, uh, to give an example, I'm one of the most tenacious people. I won't let it lie. I won't be able to still look myself in the mirror. If, when, um, a child gets killed or somebody gets killed with this junction because it surrenders everybody knows about it, all you have to do is look at the signage. Just as you go back down to Perth tonight, You'll see Chevron's signage down, then you come back up this way, there's one sign that you can't even see that's falling down. So, I was out the other night, uh, watering the plants to do on the common land, and there was a very, very near miss with the previous landlord of the pub. He was pulling across from Bowshaw, coming up this road, and the car literally hit the top of the road about 70, 80 miles an hour. It's gonna happen, and I thought I was dead, so. Um, sorry to bring it upon you, with it, but it will be a death, so I need help from this area or whatever platform, but I will be moving it forward, um, and it was really sort of a courtesy thing, and to ask if anybody could help further with it, and you know, is there any funding available, and at what cost does this room put a life, or a child's life, because I, that's the way it is, and we're already 15, 16 months down the line, with the funding in, and I can just see it filtering away at the end of the S106 uh, time frame. So that's really whether to put it on your agenda or whatever it is. And you okay. know, could I ask for some people's help in getting it done sooner rather than later? Because 15 months now has gone past and <coughs> been shelved. So. Okay. Um suggestion I would make for that particular thank you, thank you for that is that that would go sit on the planning. Um, committee given because i think we've looked at i seem to recall we looked at the scheme hmm. a while ago didn't we yeah. on, on Sorry, planning just to interrupt. planning are in here there is a bunch of trout down the bottom that's got 25 car parking space it's going to come out the top of that hill and that's being passed by planning so i will be holding you responsible for it because it will be a disaster having that kind of traffic but, 50 but 60 what, cars going in every day but what I'm what I'm saying is making sure that so that the, the council can understand what the what yeah. the issues are and yeah. understand what um, assistance you're looking for and how we can best do that. I think, and I'm looking to our current chair of planning to see whether she's in agreement with that. It would sit best with our planning committee, who had previously seen some plans of what um, what the road scheme was, and then no, and then at that, me at that meeting, that meeting, okay, out. but but that committee can then look in detail at what wow. the issues are because we're we're not able to look at it tonight because it's not on our. Um, agenda for all the things we need to cover as a full council. The good news is, from your point of view, that our planning committee meets in two weeks' time, right. so there's an opportunity so you, you won't have to wait too long before right. we would look at it, and I would suggest that you um, uh, consider whether you wish to um, either submit something in writing or, or come and explain the, exactly what support you're, you're looking for at that, that exactly. meeting. Right. And we can, if you... Have you left your contact details, or can we get them? Um, I think I'm Councillor really, I'll Brooks. Write it down the way out if I that would be great. Yeah, details. brilliant. Could I, could okay. I just one on Pete? Uh, you, you stated that there was funding for doing this work. Yes. yes. It has now gone. It has now gone. Where's it gone? Well, it's two hundred and fifty. Mr. Davis might be able well, to explain it, but it's two hundred and fifty thousand well, pounds. Where, where, where's it gone? Because obviously, when You'll the, the when, when a scheme like that was built. The housing that was built in Hayley. Yes. There would be monetary 
Poland. In the one hour yeah, of Councillor Dixon, we, we, can't, we haven't got the time to get down, down into the detail at this stage. There's a one hour six the agreement somewhere where there's some money being given to Kirkley's council uh, for doing this work that this gentleman requests and that Kirkley's planners requested when this was put in. And it's obviously been taken away by Kirkley's council and used for something else. Well, we're, I would suggest that we put it on the planning um, committee agenda and we will take um, advice in the interim if there's views of the... Um, okay, just quickly, because just you're in Kirkley's. The, 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 the Section 106 money has not gone anywhere. It is still there. It's still allocated for that. The issue at the moment is the road scheme. Um, is significantly more, the cost is significantly more than the Section 106 money. That's options for that are being discussed to see if that money can be found. So it hasn't, the money has not gone anywhere else, I can assure you. Okay, well, we'll, we'll put it on the, the agenda for two weeks' time so that we can discuss all these different different elements and understand what the position is from Kurt Lees and also what um, what we wish to uh, push forward as a parish council on what you're looking for. So thank, thank you very much for, no, for coming. You. And if you leave your contact details, that'd be great, but I know Councillor Brooks sure. got them anyway, I think. If the gentleman is wanting advice at that planning meeting, and it sounds as though he, he wants to tell us and to learn from us, mm. as far as I can tell, it might be worth him liaising with the chair before the meeting. So yeah. yeah okay. Well, if he, if, he, yeah, if, he, if you leave your contact details, then we can um, facilitate that. Okay, right, I think that brings public open session to a, uh, to a close. So the next, uh, the next item is installation of chairman. So um, the, uh, my final act as, uh, <laughs> as current chairman, and the, the reason I haven't put the, uh, the chain of office on is so that I haven't touched it in advance of whoever is um, becoming uh, chairman uh, wearing those chains. So... Um, do we have a proposal to, um, of who to elect as chairman for the rest of this council year? Yep. Councillor Davies? I nominate Councillor Bolton. I'll second that. Okay, thank you Councillor Brook. Right, can we take um, a vote on that? All those in favour please? Okay, I think that's unanimous. Okay. Super, okay. Right, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank you. So, um, shall I pass it or do you want to talk about that? I didn't even get a table in my last one. I'm supposed to put this on, though. You're supposed to put it on, yeah. We should have practiced this before, shouldn't we? Yeah. 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 We're trying to avoid touching it. That's the thing. Thank you. Hang on, so that goes at the front. Thumbs. So that, that little chain goes over your neck so that you don't strangle yourself. <laughs> My good is no, no good. I've always, always had We're a lady that came there we are. and did it for me. I'm short staffed that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So the new chair is just reading and signing declaration of office. For anyone who's not able to see their agenda. Don't want me to read it out loud, do you? No, I don't think so. I think everybody else has done. Okay. I declare that I take I take that office upon myself. And will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'll stand if that's all right. I'm getting throttled by this thing. Thank you all. Thank you all for your support and uh, electing me. I'm, I'm quite chuffed and quite. Uh, Bit overawed, really, by 
Um, and for my first, well, I would like to thank um, the outgoing chair for her um, time. She's done a fantastic job. Um, difficult shows to fill. I'll try my best, but I think I may fall short. But um, thank you very much, and I hope she gives me a bit of a hand here and there when needed. And um, yeah, so thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the forthcoming year and hope we can carry on and uh, do some really good work for the people of the Home Valley. Okay, I'll just say thank you to that and uh, thank you all of you for um, allowing me to be uh, chair of the council for, for just, uh, well, uh, around a year because we've had a bit of a funny year, haven't we? Starting at different, different times. It's been a, a strange one with, with COVID and, and such like, but um, I've very much enjoyed it and uh, enjoyed the opportunity to try and um, deliver for our community and move the, move the parish council forward as best I can. And I wish um, Councillor Pogson um, all the luck and, and support moving forward into this year. I just, um, on behalf of the council, so I would like to go and thank Council Hodley on a tremendous job she's done for the last 12 months. Uh, we all know what's been going on in the last 12 months. Um, she's done it with dignity and pride. And I think, you know, she's underestimated herself what she can do. And I think I mean, she needs more of a round of applause. I think she needs a big pat on the back and say, well done. We're proud of what you've achieved. Okay, so then the next part of this uh, meeting, thank you all, is uh, item 2122, 11, installation of a vice chair. Have we any proposals for a, for a vice chair? Can I nominate Councillor East? Um, I, I have thoughts about it, Jason, but I think probably I'll pass on it to I would like to nominate um, Councillor Joe Sweeney, who can't make it to due to his isolating due to. COVID, my cause of people are. Is he, sorry, is he to the enough required years? Yes. Right, that's okay. I'll suck it up. Good enough. Have we got any other nominations? I'll move to a vote. Or can we have a vote on Councillor Sweet to be Vice Chair next year? Against. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's carried. Councillor Joe Sweeney will be vice chairman for the forthcoming year. Um, we've still done the um, the passing in the jewel and the um, and thanking the, the previous vice chair at the next <laughs> full council meeting when he can uh, attend. Okay. 21, 22, 12, to accept apologies for absence. We've received an absence from uh, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Gould, Councillor Greaves, Councillor Hall, Councillor Sheard, Councillor Kath Bellamy, Councillor Lockley, Councillor Sweeney, and Councillor Trevor Bellamy. Is there? No, oh, is there? Is there? Yeah. Sorry, I never saw you come in, Trevor. I do apologise. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Are there any others? Is that it? Okay, thank you. Um, code of Conduct, the first item on 21-22-13, to approve the Kirkley's Code of Conduct originally adopted by the Parish Council on the 16th of December 2019. Would anyone like to speak to that? Can I propose it? 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 Can I second that. from Councillor Dixon. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much indeed for that. Okay, 21, 22, 14, County Will Bakers' Upperthong and Thornfirth Central Wards. To note the result of the by-elections held on Thursday, the 6th of May, 2021, Mr Mark Buster was elected to represent the, court, the ward of Thornfirth Central, and Mr Andy Wilson was elected to represent the ward of Upperthong. I'd like to welcome them to this full, first full council meeting. I think they've attended. I think they've been to an extraordinary meeting before, but I'd like to welcome them all to this full council meeting and look forward to working with you both on the Parish Council. Yeah. I will at this point bring forward the um, grant application for the on the show. If that's okay with everybody. So that is item. Thank you, 
27. So grant application for the Honda Show and the video tape is its paper A double A. Does any council like to comment to make discuss this or raise anything? Council Pat Coyne. Just briefly, I'd like to say that as the first thing we're considering in this year, I'd like to say that, that Honley is the best branch. <laughs> <laughs> and that I'm glad it's based as our first business. <laughs> Thank you for that, Council Colin. <laughs> Uh, could I ask Councillor Colin if she knows enough about Dolly? What does those, that picture signify on there? They're obviously both cows. I think, <laughs> we, I'm gonna, I think we're going slightly off topic here. I think we have a lot of business to go on from. And, and as much as I enjoy I Councillor I'll, Dixon I'll, I'll Senior's points of trivia, I think we need to discuss the matter at hand. So has anyone got a comment on the actual um, grant application? Councillor Doug's care. I, and just to say that we did have a, a lengthy conversation with us at the Public Publication and Communications Committee. <coughs> and, and there's other things which we think we can do, but this particular element of the um, of the new events um, seems to be a really good use of money. And, and, it, and I think what they're aiming to produce and the quality that's going to go into the, the programme, and the fact it is a centenary event, and I'm sure they're as upset as everybody else that they can't do the centenary event as they might have hoped. Um, but it felt like they put a lot of creative thought into what they could do instead, and this programme's a central element of that, which is why we recommended that it was brought forward as an urgent item tonight. So I fully support it. Okay. Do, do, do we know what the cost is of this? We haven't been told how much the grant is the application. Yes, yes we have. We have the application. Well, well, I haven't done my bit. I haven't seen anything on my bit. But. I'm trying to find it here. It's 1400. 1400. 1400. 1400. Which budget did it from? Thanks, 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 as a training ground for sheep and cattle and other things. Um, to move it out of Honley was a sin. To move it to Barnard Dais and then be short of somewhere to go on the uh, centenary show because I was asked some uh, years ago to find an alternative site. Honley Show Committee, I'm not saying these people know anything about it, were, a, were offered a permanent site about 30 years ago by a local farmer. Uh, they refused it and said that they didn't have uh, the money that was required to do it. And if they refused the gumption at the time, they would have had a permanent site and never needed to go back into the centre of Honley. I don't know whether uh, Honley Cricket Club, I know the first Honley show I ever went to as a young kid was to the uh, recreation ground. Whether there is enough facility there now, um, car parking is going to be a big issue. Um, I want to see on the show remain, but if it's going to be in a dialogue form, I think it's disappointing that the uh, 100th show isn't a bigger one rather than a smaller one. Uh, but if it is the only way forward, um, I'm not going to condone it, I'm not going to condone anybody. Um, but uh, if the money is to be made available, um, that be the case, that it will be support, that it will show that we've done something for them. Um, I hope it isn't an annual event, and I hope it's a one-off for this uh, uh, particular event. And for those who don't know what they are, they are woodland, white faced woodland sheep, and uh, are residents of this hillside and run to the Darwin Valley of Derbyshire. Thank and you for I you. have been the chairman of the society <laughs> in the past in years gone by. Oh, but that's good because some people think they're goats. <laughs> some people <laughs> so I'm glad you're here to put it right. They're definitely they're not, not cows. They're, they're definitely not goats. They're definitely they're, 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 they're Thank you very much indeed for your contribution, Councillor Dixon. As much as I would like to discuss livestock, <laughs> um, I'm quite happy to if we can move on and get the matter in hand. So I've got Councillor Jason Brooke and then Councillor Trevor no, Bellamy. And Councillor Dalton. Have I taken me that order? Is that okay? Councillor Brooke? Yeah. Um, 
the came last week and um, they did it before the good job, they explained a lot. Um, the reason why it's been moved to where it is is because of obviously of COVID. And they wanted to bring a show on this year and this is the best they can do for this year, which is pat on the back, they've done really well to get it this far organised. I'd like to recommend the council that we do contribute and help this, get this show to go on and just get the world moving forward again. And this is an opportunity for this council to say, yeah, we're, we're moving forward now. We'll start helping people move forward. So I ask the council to support this as best they can. Um, I'd like to give them the full amount they're asking for, but I'll leave all to yourselves. But please accept what's going on, that we need to move forward and help these people so that we will come move forward. Councillor Bellamy. Thank you. Yes, just, uh, just a reminder that uh, over the years, the Paris Council has actually uh, supported and attended on the show in one form or another. Uh, we've had uh, counters, displays, etc., etc., promoting Paris Council within the whole show situation. Um, I would say, on, on the top of that, as far as I'm aware, we've always paid for our stove. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. That's my that's not, that's not. Yeah, um, on the show, uh, um, I used to live on the edge of the showfield on Derwent Road uh, when uh, where it was held for many, many years before it moved to its current location at Family Ties. But on the matter of the application for the grant, uh, for the grant um, firstly, uh, on the Show Society Limited is a private company that looks to make money, and uh, I hope you make good money. Um, but it's got large reserves, it's also got large reserves. You've been as asking the parish council, which is uh, a custodian, custodian of taxpayers, uh, to contribute £1,400 to uh, an event which you uh, have, have said um, you've got an oversubscription for with regard to, with regard to stall holders. Uh, Presumably, you're uh, expecting the event to raise money, not not lose money. Um, and uh, I'd just like to say uh, it's not really appropriate, in my view, for the um, uh, parish council to be using the taxpayers' money to uh, improve the profit uh, lines of uh, a, a private business. Uh, that's not to say I don't fully support the on the show, and I may well come and attend as I often often do. <laughs> But I will not be uh, voting in favour of the grant application. Thank you for that. Just a point of information: it is a limited company, so a not-for-profit company registered in England and Wales. So, uh, that's the details on their grant application form. Yeah, yeah. But suspend standing, can, can, can can we suspend standing orders for yeah, a point of information from the applicant. I'm ready to answer the questions whenever the procedure allows. Okay. Um, Let's take a vote on suspending standing orders. Can we take a vote on suspending standing orders for point of information from the... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I think I, there's a, a good appreciation of this show uh, in the room, which I'm, uh, I'm grateful for. It is um, an organisation that's a company limited uh, by guarantee. And indeed, from time to time we do make a profit. And also, anybody familiar with this show will know that from time to time we do, we do make a, a significant loss. So the way that we look at it is when we, uh, we, we do have a good year, um, we'll make uh, a, a little bit of money and then uh, put it in the reserves for when we don't. Because what we have to remember is on the show is a full-blooded agricultural show and it, uh, it does cost an awful lot of money to, uh, to put on. So it costs some um, um, say 80,000 something like that to actually put up, put it on. So in order to keep the uh, the enterprise legal, that means that we have to have money there in case we lose 100% of the money that we're putting on. We couldn't ask our uh, uh, committee to take any risk, otherwise that would be uh, that would be foolhardy and, and, uh, and to the, the personal detriment. So um, I've, I've always gone through, but. What I, also what I would say, we, we've been around 100 years, our roots are in the community, we, uh, um, a couple of things happened recently but it, this is not a good time to be going out and making commitments on, uh, on future sites. Um, we wanted to do something this year to the benefit of the community, it is an event, it's not a show, there's nothing permanent, it's a one-off that we wanted to have in the village of Honley. The people of Honley 
are looking forward to it and perhaps even what, what they've been through in the last 15 months, uh, they need it and uh, they would like that to, as an event to look forward to to get more uh, through the winter. So I think that answers some of the questions. I'll sit down now in case there are uh, any more, please. Councillor Bustard, have you a question for the meeting or have you a question for the people? Well, just a question for you guys. Um, it's been really good that you, you've got an event. Um, have we got your contact details and do you have everything you need in terms of COVID planning? I'm happy to help you with your planning should you need. We love a new committee member, Mark. Very welcome. I can't, I can't promise that, but I'm very <laughs> no, happy I don't to talk about yeah. your plans. And, uh, that would be great. Yeah, we, we do we have to engage with the Kirkley's uh, SAG, I think, the appropriate uh, SAG, yeah, I've certainly got um, some experience of, of SAG, but uh, not particularly good experience with Kirkley's We've got SAG. quite a large agenda, and if it's not regarding the actual grant application, I'm quite happy to get in no, touch sorry, with them at a later date, and okay. get in touch with them and liaise with them, but if it's not regarding the matter in hand of this grant application, can we move on? Yes. Councillor Dixon. Um, I'd like to second uh, Councillor Brooks' proposal. Yeah. If anyone else would like to speak on the actual grant application itself, can I go up there, folk? Can we move to a vote? All those in favour? Okay, that's. Would you like us to record your vote against or uh, are you okay? Yes, yeah, you can record my vote against. Thank you, Thank you Castle Delton. Still like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, and we'll go back to the agenda as. As is. So we're now on item number 15, I believe. 22. Sorry. 15, yeah. Yep. 21, 22, 15. To approve the recommendation of the staffing committee that the community, one, that the community asset supports committee is the all and its responsibility to be redistributed. That all grants be managed by the man finance and management committee, including regular sharing grants from certain provision, such as the Home Valley Transport Scheme and the Valley Minibuses. That all buildings assets be overseen by service provision committee with delegation to the clerk and new subcommittee created to coordinate day-to-day -day management. Would anyone, any other council like to speak on that? Uh, Councillor Hogley. Um, I was ju just going to say that lots of the, um, the, the elements of these proposals were obviously all discussed at the staffing committee, but effectively one of the things we were trying to address was um, the burden of administration that goes with the, the number of meetings and we had a staffing review undertaken by um, an independent uh, person who um, is part of the, the audit um, internal audit organization I forgot the name, name of the <coughs> name of it but one of the recommendations was that actually we had too many too many committees and it was creating an awful lot of administration but also um, potentially some confusion about who was responsible for what so um, what we looked at was whether there was any opportunity to condense some of the committees and the sense was that the community asset support committee whilst it served a specific purpose when it was first set up to support the um, asset transfer of <coughs> first the civic hall and then in turn only library actually over the course of the last 18 months to, to a year we'd had discussions within this council about the fact that grant giving had sort of been separated into lots of different areas and there was a sense that actually putting the big um, grant responsibilities back within the umbrella of finance and management committee rather than having some sitting with this um, separate um, committee would, would bring more sort of control back to the uh, council as well. So there were two, two clear benefits both in terms of um, reducing the, the burden of uh, committee meetings but also um, allowing there to be more visibility of how much money was being uh, given to support different community assets um, and then the service some elements will go into the service provision committee because that's about providing services for our community so the obviously the next item goes into the in practice what sits under each each committee but there were sort of the, t the two elements that, that drove these recommendations okay Councillor Tom Dixon um, it mentions the sub subcommittee for the data layer management, so that may to do with the title office, I take it. Would that be a working group, or how would that work as a subcommittee? I don't know. They, can I just clarify that? Please, yes. Yeah, the, the intention of including the comment about the subcommittee is because in order for a standing committee to set up its own subcommittee, it can choose to set up a subcommittee, but it has to have been given that power to create a subcommittee by full council in the first place. So, the, so when service provision first meets, it may decide that a subcommittee isn't appropriate or indeed a working group might be, might be better for um, 
day-to-day uh, -day management. So it's about full council allowing the service provision committee when it meets to decide how best to manage um, the day-to-day -day assets. So, and that's following some guidance we've had from um, the local council association about the responsibility, the sort of cascade of responsibilities through the different committee structure. Okay, thanks. Okay, Councillor Dixon Senior. Uh, if that is the wish of the staffing committee, I don't see any point in wasting any more time as we can move, move with the point one, two, and three okay. and get done with it. Are there any other comments? So we've got a proposal. Oh, Councillor Dixon and Bellamy. Thank you. If I can just, with re regard to the number of committees for, for the benefit of our members who don't know, when the, uh, when the person did that review, a matter of a few weeks ago, uh, over the 12 month period, she came up with the fact that we had 63 committee meetings plus four working parties over the 12 month period. So that's what deemed to be rather over the top. Thanks. Thank you for that statistical information there, Councillor Bellamy. Very worthwhile. Have anyone else like to speak or will move to a vote? We have a, sorry, we have a proposal. I'll second it. We have a seconder. All those in favour? Any against? That's being carried. Thank you very much indeed. Item 21, 22, 16, Standing Order, Scheme of Delegation and Financial Regulations. If 22, 22 is approved, which it was, consequently approved the change to the Parish Council Standing Orders pertaining specifically to sections 4, 19 and 26. Has everybody seen those? Yeah. Um, so item 1, I'll take that on its own. Is everyone okay with that? Does anyone like to comment on that? Really? So, Councillor Brooks moved that. Was that seconded by Councillor by Council Kerr? All those in favour? Then item 2 of that. To approve the change to the scheme of delegation, the update also includes a decision made at full council on 21st of June 2021 to give responsibility for the home allotments to the service provision committee. The scheme of delegation has been further updated following the resolution of full council on 14th of December 2020 so that 2.26 reads that the clerk can authorise expenditure of up to £1,000. Have we all seen that? Has anyone like to comment, talk on that, discuss on that, Councillor Dixon? Um, home allotments uh, to the service provision committee. Who was responsible for them before? Finance and management. That, that, the responsibility of that rested with finance and management. So finance and management drew in the money, but had no provision to spend any money out on those allotments. Right. So finance and management will still draw in the money, but service provision will be responsible for if they have any, if they have any maintenance or need anything. I do have concern with this uh, item, the, the last part of the item, and the same with uh, item three. Uh, giving the clerk uh, authority to spend up to a thousand pounds. If that up to a thousand pounds is on a limited amount of occasions, uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I would, could see that the clerk could authorise expenditure up to a thousand pounds on a lot of items and end up with a situation where. Uh, we're just spending money for the sake of spending money, or uh, getting uh, people, uh, or giving people money, uh, that uh, <coughs> no regulation is over. When we've got grants up to £1,000 now, or it was up till recently, um, if the clerk can give £1,000 out as well, I think there should be some control over that. Okay, if you, if you look at item, uh, item 4.1 within that, expenditure on revenue items may be authorised up to the amounts included for that class of expenditure in the previous budget. This authority is determined by the Council for all items over 5,000, the duly elected committee of the Council for items over 500, or the clerk or deputy clerk in conjunction with the chairman of, of Council or chairman of the appropriate committee for any items below £1,000. So it would need to be done in conjunction with... It doesn't, chair, it, doesn't chair say, it, it doesn't say that clearly enough to me in, in that if it said that it was with that uh, control, I would feel a lot happier. It, it, it's just basically saying that the clerk has authority to spend a thousand pounds. I know Richard's going to have trouble trying to balance the book if uh, we get a clerk who likes to throw thousands and thousands of pounds. It's gonna, I was thinking that uh, it's going to be a the clerk is not Councilor, the person who's financially. I take your point, Councillor Dixon, but it is now much in control and authority to spend that it would be 
in conjunction with the chairman of council or chairman of the appropriate committee for any items below one thousand. Can I have that altered on the on um, this so that it, it clearly states that? Councillor Dixon, I come back to you. But Councillor Brooke will. Yeah, I'll come to you. I'll come to you, Councillor Dixon. I'm happy with this idea, but um, to, to, just to make it more clear, if you can change the paperwork so it does explain better to you know, to councillors what it does entail, like it does go through the, the chairman as well, not just the clerk, it's more explainable. Councillor Dalton. Yes, Councillor Dixon and uh, Councillor Brooke, I, I think Councillor Pogson read from the actual scheme of delegation. The agenda item doesn't fully explain um, that the actual document D does. I think that's yeah. what Councillor yeah. Boxen yeah. is inferring. So we're not voting on the item on the agenda, we're voting for the scheme of delegation of document D as amended. Thank you for that. That's, great. that's my understanding. Councillor Dixon. Yeah, um, I'd have to change, so I'd like to propose that we accept it. Have we got a second? Yeah. With, with the word in the way that you've done it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Just ignore this, isn't it? It's referred to at document D. Okay, all those in favour? Thank you very much, Dr. Carrick. Okay, then, um, item three of that, to approve the financial regulations with a similar change to two above, namely to state that the clerk can authorise expenditure up to £1,000. Yeah. Second, second. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Okay. Item 21, 22, 17 to appoint officer holders. <coughs> We're going with the first slot because item 15 wasn't true. <laughs> so, didn't we used to, if you will bear with me. Uh, didn't we used to appoint them at the, uh, uh, the only members of that committee were allowed to vote and that uh, the voting took place at the start of the first meeting of the committee. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Standing you orders. That question for him? Yeah. Um, in the past, I will sort of um, clarify myself. In the past, we have appointed, we've decided to move, we have voted to move item to um, 18, <coughs> and from that then we've appointed committee members. In the past, we have moved item 18 above item 17. Um, However, as the standing orders are, we appoint the chair and the vice chair first. Have we a proposal to alter the way the, the agenda? Mr. Chairman, can I just explain that? Uh, we generally do uh, get the chairman of there, but we can hold the vice chair to the uh, first meeting of the group um, if we can, nobody decides to be the vice chair. So we, we do generally um, elect a chairman for each committee. Mm -hmm. on the night. You could swap 17 or 18. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, we will go as we are. If it's not working, then we'll have to swap them around, which is what has happened in the past. So, Chairman and Vice Chair of the Finance and Management Committee. Would anyone like to propose anyone to be Chair of the Finance and Management Committee? Councillor Blacker? Propose Councillor Conning. Okay, have we a seconder for that? I'm assuming Councillor Conning is willing. All those in favour? Councillor Conning is Chair of Finance and Management? Mr Chairman, can I just ask one question? Uh, you're only allowed to be chairman on one committee. No, no. And I yes, think Councillor Collins uh, elected. Uh, no, that's the first committee no, that's been elected. She's been elected, elect, uh, throwing on the paperwork. I thought, uh, thought her name was down for another committee. It may be down no, for CASP, but that's a committee Cass. that doesn't exist. We've just voted to get rid of CASP. Right, that's okay. I, no, I and I believe you can be now. I've seen it in my papers and I, I didn't want somebody to be uh, <laughs> taking two jobs on. And getting into trouble. Thank you, you for that contribution. You can do two jobs. Can do two jobs. We we passed that last year. Yeah. Yeah. So for vice chair, the chairman of finance and management. Have we put anyone proposed to be vice chair of finance and management? Or can we defer that decision to that um, that yeah. committee yeah. on their first meeting to yeah. Yeah. appoint a vice chair? All those in favour? Yeah. Okay. okay. Chairman and vice chair of planning committee. Do we have a proposal for a chair of the planning committee? Councillor Colling? Councillor Do we have a second there? Yeah. Councillor Dixon? All those in favour? Councillor Barker? I believe that's been carried. Okay. Chairman and Vice Chairman of Publications and Communications Committee. Do we have any pr anyone propose anyone? Can I nominate Councillor Hogwarts? 
Matthews. Um, do we have a second dead? I'd rather not. <laughs> or do we have any alternative proposals? Councillor Kerr. No, I was, I was seconding that. I was just trying to work out whether the actual was in agreement or not. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I think she does. <laughs> She's not shouted, scream, no, 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 yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not overly, I'm not overly keen to be honest. But if, but if no one else is willing to do it, then I'll, I'll do it. Who's the current chair? Some reminders. I'm the current chair. Are you willing still to do it? No, I don't want to be on that. I'm doing other things. Okay. Are anybody, any other candidates, anyone else? Can we see who's going to be the? Would it be better if the council allowed me to wait to see? When we get the full group and then make a mind up. We have a... <laughs> we're playing loose and fast with the standing yeah. orders there. Oh, if we have agendas and agenda it is. Could, yeah, could, yeah, could we defer this one as Councillor Brooks has until... Until we've got the, the, the who's in the group then come back yeah. to it on this meeting tonight. I mean, Councillor Brooks... OK, we'll defer this item until later this evening. That's OK, after item 18, OK? Yeah. OK. Four, Chairman and Vice-Chairman of the Service Review Committee. Would anyone like it? Councillor Carr? No, I propose Councillor East, please. Okay, would anyone second, second that? Councillor Brook? All those in favour of Councillor East as chair of Service Provision? He seems willing well, to vote for himself, so that's his consent. <laughs> 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 that, yeah, you don't want to do on your gag, do Chairman and Vice Chair of Climate Emergency Committee. Sorry, do we have a Vice Chair of Service Provision? Anyone to propose or? Councillor Carr. Councillor Carr? Do we have a, is Councillor Carlin to be Vice Chair of Service yes, Provision? Yeah. Well, second, 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 second that. All those in favour? Hello, I'm, I'm very sorry, I wasn't expecting anyone. Can I just get something from the office, doesn't it? Please, quickly go through. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ignore you. The public are welcome. Yeah, the public are welcome. We'll ignore you walking through. <laughs> That's what I mean. You are more than welcome to sit in and enjoy and join us if you, if you like. Councillor Dalton. Everywhere. The music isn't as nice tonight, Mike, as usual. Okay, so ch Chairman of the Climate Emergency Committee. Can I come to Councillor Davis? Are we going to make another proposal first? Okay, so that's okay. okay. Uh, I'd like to propose uh, Councillor Hoggy as chair. Okay, happy to do that. I propose and second that. Are those in Councillor Hoggy as chair of the uh, Climate Emergency Committee? Gary? Okay. You have to press your hand somebody else for all the job now, yeah. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, six. So chairman of Staffing Committee, usually the chairman of the council in previous years. I would propose Council Hogley to be chair of the Staffing Committee. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's where I was wondering where they, they were going to cause you a problem. No, it doesn't. Can you be chairman of two committees? Yes, we can. But the clerk's already clarified that. It's just changed. Is that just, just it's changed standing orders some time ago. Yeah. All those in favour? Okay, to appoint standing committees. I believe item F and G. Has everyone got sight of F and G? Yes, F was if Casper player, so it's G we're looking at. Yeah. to go through all these they're all within the numbers allow for those committees so therefore all those people on those committees can be on those committees um, if everyone's got sight of it do we are we okay just voting on block that that's how the committees will be made up Councillor Dixon just clarify item F is not applicable not applicable because that's if we had a cask committee we do we've, we've disbanded that so we're on item G. <coughs> is, there, is there anybody that was on the uh, CASC uh, committee uh, that we're not having that responsibility now being taken away from them that they would wish to go on to any of the other committees in place of that one? Hopefully they have, and that's why we had F and G. So F was if CASC was in existence, <coughs> G is because CASC is no 
no longer in existence. So hopefully that matter has taken up, but it is a valid point. Does anyone who's not aware of that want to uh, change their preferences or anything like that? Can I just, um, uh, Councillor uh, Kath Bellamy, we do want to stay on the pubs and comms. It's not on this list. Yeah, she she has to wait until she's back in back in the council to. Oh yeah, but she's just saying that like, yeah. she wants to stay sure. on the book. So we need to put it on this list, even <coughs> if she not, can't attend the morning. No, no, you you can't until she's actually back in the council. Right. Okay, so she has to. Come to the council. Understand that when she does come back, that she would like to. Yeah. There is it, there is space on there, and I'm sure we would. Yeah, yeah. We would vote Councillor Bellamy on that. Not that I can. There's space. There's, 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 space, there's space on any of these committees. Yeah. There is space on all these committees. <coughs> Councillor Carr. Just, uh, I think the, the clerks have asked people numerous times to put the names forward, and if, if the names work and if the numbers are fine, I propose we move that list to six. The, the only person who hasn't is Council, Councillor Firth. Councillor Firth, would you like to go on any of the committees? Did he hear you, Michael? Yeah, you Councillor Firth, would you like to go on any of the committees? Sorry? Would you like to go on any of the committees? Yeah, yeah, the committee? I guess I would, actually. The, what used to be the general purpose, I don't know what it's called. Service, service provision. provision. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we can add you to service provision. I believe. Yep. Have you got that, Richard? Yep. Um, so looking down there, we're a bit short on pubs and comms. If anyone else would like to join pubs and comms, Councillor Blacker. No, sorry, I wasn't volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Careful when you put your hand up. Be careful putting your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Blacker. I was just um, wanting to draw attention to the membership of the planning committee. Um, it's a maximum of 13 are allowed, and there are only eight. Um, and it's desirable to have a council from each ward. Uh, and there are a number of wards with no, no representation, um, and representation from Holland is going to be very, um, from Valley North is going to be very, very thin. So just asking people who, who would like to cons consider, if anyone would like to consider joining the planning, it is a hard working committee. Mayor, Mayor, I think you've got to, there were only seven, you said eight, there's only seven names down here. You're looking at Good luck to G. Yeah, I think there are. Just eight on this one. Look at G. Yeah. Yeah. Next page. Next one. So we can. Councillor Mustard. Possibly my mistake, but I have yeah. climate emergency rather than planning. Okay, would you like to change? No. Or oh, would you like to go on both? There is. I have to say, as a Holly representative, I've more than once been outvoted by the first people <laughs> for something I was against for homely. So I would like to see more homely people on the planning committee. So, so, okay, I mean, everyone can have a little bit of time to think about this because I think there is space on all the committees. So if someone does want to join a committee at a later date, that committee you can be elected onto it at a later date. And therefore, um, we've had a proposal on the second uh, that it will, we would move to just um, vote these en masse as, as G is with the addition of Councillor Firth for service provision and what was the other one? Could you add me to climate change? And to add Councillor Buster to climate change. Thank you. Welcome. Councillor Dallin. Climate emergency. Climate, climate emergency. We need to talk about propaganda terms. <laughs> Noted. Councillor. There, there. So, yeah, to count I'm an emergency. All those in favour? <laughs> Thank you very much. Is, is Councillor Buster saying you don't want to be on planning then? You never said that. About <laughs> You're thinking about planning, okay. Okay, so going back to 17, we need a. Which one didn't we have a chair for? We don't have a chair for Pubs and Comms. Pubs and Comms. If we don't have someone coming for this meeting, can I propose that that... Can I propose Councillor Brook? Can I ask that? Yeah. Although it's in favour of Councillor Brook is in charge of pubs, pubs and comms. Thank you very much indeed. Great stuff. Thank you very much indeed for all those people who stepped forward as chairs and uh, all those people who stepped forward to join committees. Thank you very much indeed. 
Item 21, 22, 19, Minutes of Committees of Council Committee Meetings. Um, so I will go to the... Um, number one, it's uh, more to Rachel to move that as the outgoing the previous chair of that meeting. Yep, okay. Um, Ask for approval of the minutes of the Extraordinary Council meeting from the 21st of June, number 212201 to 212208. Please. All those in favour? Okay. Okay, Rachel again, number two. Um, like to seek approval for the minutes of the annual parish meeting held on 22nd of March 2021, number 202101 to 202105. All those in favour? Thank you. Um, Paul, yep. Davis. Yep. To, <coughs> to note the minutes of the Climate Emergency Committee meeting held on 15th of March 2021, number 212251 to 212263. Okay, that's the note. Is that note available? Then? Yep. And then, yep. Well, number four, to approve. What's about yep. this one? Yep. To approve the minutes of the Climate Emergency Committee meeting held on the 21st of May 2021, number 212201 to 21, 22, 11. Do you have a seconder for that? Yeah. And all those in favour? Okay. Mary, to save time, do you mind if we take all in one go? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this, well, this, the first three is to note. Maybe to we note. should take them break separately. Yeah. Uh, do I need to read out the whole? Yes. Yes. Right, so. Thank you. Right. Uh, ask ask the, the council to note the minutes of the planning committee meeting held on 12th of April, numbered 212201 to 212218. Well, um, uh, to note the minutes of the planning committee held on the 17th of May 2021, numbered 212219 to 212235. And furthermore, um, ask you to note at the minutes the planning committee held on the 7th of June 2021, number 212236 to 212251. And finally, ask the council to approve the minutes the planning committee held on the 28th of June, uh, numbered 2122 to 21. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Some figures missing there. <coughs> I'll second that. Well, the missing figures. <laughs> I know they will be amended by the, by the clerk at a later date. Um, all those in favour? Richard. You hear me. Thank you. <laughs> Number nine. To improve the minutes of the Safety Division Committee meeting held on the 19th of April 2021, number 2021 to 212211, Minutes of Safety Division, 19th of April. I'll move those. Seconded. All those in favour? Okay, and then myself again to note the minutes of the Finance and Management Committee meeting on the 26th of April 2021, minute number 212201 to 212217. I'll move that in my favour. That's carried. And I see positive arms in the air, so we know where we're actually voting, please. Um, and then the next one to approve the minutes of the Finance Management Committee meeting held on 14th of June 2021, number 2122 to 2122. All those in favour? Same again. Same. Thank you. Okay, and then we're on to Councillor Bellamy. For the Staffing Committee. Indeed, yes. Can I ask the committee to approve the 10th of May meeting, 10th of May 2021, numbers 212201 to 212209. All those in favour? And then the next one, Councillor Bellamy. Yes, thank you. Again, staffing committee meeting <coughs> held on the 25th of June 2021, number 21210 to 212225. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> so we're on now. The Council has asked to approve the policy. This is 212220. The Council has asked to approve the policies described in the attached list of policies. You. 
complete with the dates on which they were last approved and including the changes to the standing orders, scheme of delegation and financial regulations in item 21, 22, 16 above. All the posters can be viewed on the council's website. So, are we all on sight of that item? You? Does anyone like to speak to that item? Councillor Black. Yes, I, I did look at the list, and I, and I, I did note that, that some, some of the policies are actually quite quite elderly. I think um, I noticed the date of 2008 on one of them. I, I just, just wondered whether um, we have procedures for um, <coughs> reviewing, um, reviewing the policies, um, and, and perhaps the inclusion of the date of adoption at the bottom of the policy and the date for review. Maybe not for discussion now, but a, a matter for the future. Okay, so the, the items that you've looked at the website, they've got a date of 2008, although even though on our scheme here they've been approved at yes. later, they've just been. Yeah. So you believe that some of them may be outstanding and could do with review? It, yes, I, I, feel, I feel perhaps with, with a, a, a review of the policies in perhaps. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing to have old policies. Um, I think we have plenty of older councillors. And uh, we do as best we can. So if we're as good as the policy, the policies are as good as us. I don't see any change. Okay, then I think it's important that we um, update the the, the dates, the, the footnotes on them are current and where they need to be. That the the ones available on the website are the ones most up to date, and they should be redated yeah. to that effect. And so, um, but the, so I take your point, and we will bring, come back to the review of the documents and have a look at them at a later date. Fine. Thank you. But are we okay at this moment in time to adopt them as it is? Yeah, So, Councillor Brook, Councillor Black, here. all those in favour? Thank you. <coughs> okay, 21, 22, 21. To approve the recommendations from the Staffing Committee on the 21st of June 2021 regarding how to implement the recommendations of the independent external review of the staff and workload. To appoint an additional member of staff working 10 hours per week from September 2021 on a temporary basis, the exact nature of that post will be defined by the staffing committee after review of officers' work responsibilities. <coughs> the extra staffing time will be reviewed by the staffing committee on the 15th of November. Consider whether a permanent increase of 10 hours is necessary. Would anyone like to speak to that matter? Councillor Kerr. Um, I, I did speak against this when it was discussed previously. I just, I just think the timelines are far too short, far too tight. I'm still personally not convinced of the need. I do think we've got a number of changes with a, a new clerk coming in. Um, it just, it, but I certainly don't think we'll learn enough in three months to actually come to a decision on that. Own. And it's a lot of pressure to get that committee to meet, recruit, and get somebody in post for September. I think it's ambitious anyway. So I think there's a number of challenges with that as it is. But I'm still of the view that we should let the new clerk settle in, let the new committee settle down and see if we've still got a pressure staffing. Councillor Tom Dixon. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Doug. I think the point I was going to make is that we're looking to the point of number of staff, 10 hours per week, temporary basis, exact nature of the post to be defined. So we don't know what work and what we're going to be doing here. So Mitchell might want to answer that here. But like, that's what I mean. If we had a bit more detail behind it and I knew like, kind of what I was voting for, it would be able to give that judgment. Okay, Councillor Dixon Senior and then Councillor Hogley. Uh, it, it, just, uh, it, it, it seems strange that we're getting another member of staff, a new clerk, and we're going to need extra work. In the past, we've had, uh, for quite a number of years, um, I know it had to change because uh, Liz couldn't cope with the uh, the numbers game, and that's where Richard was brought in. But it was always uh, a clerk RFO uh, with a secretary. We're now getting a situation where we've got an RFO and a clerk as well. So that's a lot more uh, expenditure for the council. And then to put another 10 hours for a third party uh, when I think the uh, facilities for working in that little office, uh, if there's three people working in at the same time, uh, it's basically a no-no. Um, we're saying we want somebody else to do 10 hours a week. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but uh, if 
uh, Richard carries on doing the work that he's, the law that he's doing, that the new clerk uh, would be able to carry out the other necessary works that were required. And I, I don't see the point in having another, uh, a third party member. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Hogway. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this proposal that comes from the, or recommendation from the staffing committee is following the staffing review that we had undertaken, again, by this independent party, who advised that um, there really was effectively too much work for the staff that we had. And, um, and it came up with various proposals, which you, um, I think you'll have seen in the staffing um, committee minutes, which were opportunities with which to reduce the burden of the um, workload on our on our staff now obviously we had a we've appointed a new new clerk to the same number of hours they both work 25 uh, hours but one of the proposals that was made in that report was to increase the hours of um, of the clerk or um, another option was to recruit some um, more administrative support so there was a there was a lengthy discussion in the staffing committee about the merits of either increasing the hours of um, the clerk or the deputy clerk, if they were willing to take on those hours, um, and the associated cost that's up with that, or seeking some administrative support for the tasks which our um, uh, previous clerk had identified needed doing in terms of the um, administration of um, things like all the, the record keeping, the shredding of old documents, the keeping on top of all the um, administration which, which um, the previous clerk um, was unable to achieve within the time frame that she had. So that was, that was the recommendation and an independent report said that we need to consider more staffing time. So what the staffing committee looked at was whether we would seek to increase the hours, but when we looked at the comparable costs of increasing the hours of, of a clerk and actually what <coughs> skill set we needed or potentially needed, uh, it, it wasn't really necessarily the right fit. So what the staffing committee thought is rather than coming to this um, council and saying, well, we, we think we do need some administrative support and we'd like a permanent position and we're certain we need it, conscious that we've got a new clerk um, joining us who has a, a different skill set from the previous clerk, we couldn't yet identify what those tasks were that that um, individual would be doing because it would vary according to what the new clerk um, wished to um, needed support with. So we didn't want to tie the hands effectively of the, of the clerk and deputy clerk and say, we've brought someone in who's going to do, say, the, I don't know, um, the social um, media website updates, all that sort of thing, and then find that actually that was something that our new clerk was skilled at and that wasn't the area that she would um, benefit support with. So the staffing committee felt that it was important that we acted on the recommendations of the staffing report to show that actually we recognised that there did need to be some um, additional support for the, the staff team because it was our responsibility to look after the welfare of our staff. And if we're being told by an um, external report that they're unable to achieve what we expect them to do within the time, we have to take that seriously. Now, we have obviously, as a council, agreed to remove a committee, which does make a, a difference to the amount of work that's required. But what this proposal was, was, that, uh, was to allow some flexibility for a temporary member, so a, a, a temporary member of staff um, which can be recruited on a fairly uh, rapid time frame because it's just to a temporary position, even if it's just to be recruited for um, a week or two to do, say, some administration in the, in the office. But we didn't want to, as I say, we didn't want to tie, um, tie things in, in knots. But the, the difficulty with any um, staff recruitment is obviously, quite rightly, the staffing committee has to come to full council to seek approval of that. And we didn't want to find we were waiting until... Um, October time before we were in a position if our, if our clerk and deputy clerk were finding that they were indeed overwhelmed with the amount of work they had to do that we weren't able to support them so I don't know if anyone else on the um, staffing committee wants to comment on that on that or add um, anything to what I've said I've got councillor Jason Brook and then councillor Davis would like to speak yeah um, I see where this is coming from um, um, years ago, when I used to recruit stuff and all that, when you're training somebody up, the job slows down. And the, the, with the council work, that can't slow down. So it makes kind of sense to get somebody just to take this slack away to somebody that we can train this client up to a good position and don't put too much pressure on Richard because it's not fair on him to, you know, to take up the slack. 
So I would ask the council to consider this on recommend it because I think it makes sense. As I say, the job slows down when you're trying to train somebody up. But this, this council can't slow down. We've got to keep a certain pace of things with minutes, notes, um, phone calls, etc. So I'm asking the council to approve this. Thank you. Councillor Davis and I'll come to Councillor. Yeah, uh, I actually said on the, the staffing committee, but unfortunately I missed <coughs> the discussion. So I won't, I won't refer to the discussion. I think Councillor already explained that um, very comprehensively. I think for me the key key here is this these are recommendations by an independent external review. So somebody who came in without any any kind of view about individuals and, and they would have looked at actual workload, not individuals. And so therefore the amount of workload doesn't doesn't change in that sense. And I think that's what Councillor Hogley is referring to. We have a certain amount of, of work that needs to be done. Okay, some individuals. Um, could possibly be more efficient than others, some may have more knowledge, but that, that's beside the point really. We have this workload. External um, reviewers said, in terms of looking at that workload, we current hours are not enough, and therefore we need to increase the hours. And I think to me this is a sensible, uh, fairly risk-free proposal, because we're not taking somebody on full time. It's as Council Hodley said, it's, uh, it'll be on temporary contract. Um, it um, seems uh, a as I say, a very sensible way forward and a very measured, measured approach. So I would certainly support that as well. Thank you, Councillor Dalton. I'm confused. I mean, what Rachel's described, um, Councillor Hopkins described as the requirement for the clerk and the deputy clerk is basically an extra bit of hand, you know, shredding or filing, whatever it might be. Is this the same as the Staff development. No, no, um, it's not the staff development. The staff development coordinator will be a member of the staffing committee who oversees the staff. Right. So it's, it, this is that's not that's not a role that we're recruiting to. Right. Okay. That's not a position we're creating. Well, we're creating in the sense of it will be one of us. Right. <laughs> Does that no, make an unpaid that, that, council? That clarifies my confusion. Thank you. Okay. So on that item, then the recommendation of staffing committee one. Um, have anyone else like to comment? Do I? No, I'll propose that goes a. Are we a second then? Okay, Councillor Hogler. All those in favour of that proposal? Ten, is that right? Yep. <coughs> Done. And against? For or against, so that's been carried. Thank you. Sorry, I raised my hand twice there. I wasn't against. I was for. I thought you said again. Oh, <laughs> against. <laughs> Maybe it's my colloquialism yeah, it beginning. Yeah. yeah. It's acoustics. Not again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, then number two of that to approve the new guidelines on the post of staffing development coordinator. Would you like to speak on that? Or? Uh, yeah, I can do this. Um, we've had a staffing development coordinator. As, uh, it's just a member of the council who effectively acts as line manager on behalf of the um, council for the clerk and then, then the, so the deputy clerk and, um, and the other uh, members of member staff report to the clerk. So that, that position has always existed, um, but the staffing committee looked at what the um, scope was of that role and its name and felt it probably didn't really fairly reflect what, um, what the role involves. Um, so it's got, um, so we've got performance in the title. So it's now called um, Staffing Performance and Development Lead. I've got that in the right way around. Yep. I think I have. Now my screen's gone black. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, there's a much clearer, thank you. Um, there's a much clearer list of exactly what the role is. So the principal role is to act as line manager of the clerk of the council um, and it's on behalf of the, the council. And that involves um, things like doing the annual appraisal with the, um, with the clerk, making sure that they um, act as a, a conduit between councillors who want to raise issues and the, and the staff team, talk to, basically it's the, the um, main point of contact for any staffing, staffing issues, both from the, from the clerk team and also um, from councillors about the, the staffing team. So, that, so the uh, document which has been uh, put in as an annex to the scheme of delegation as well um, 
is uh, outlines what it was again it was discussed at staffing committee but it just formalizes what the role involves so it's, it's not a new but it's not a new role it's just clarifying the role and giving it a new name which says more fairly what it is yes the previous role had a more <coughs> wider name and didn't have really much defined what it what was the expectation which we didn't think was fair to either the staff or the council that whoever's in that role there's an expectation of what they should do and we thought that this um, put the real this far with them is a bit more clear than what we expect. And as you clarify, the point, the um, appointment of that role happens within the staffing committee. So they're a member of the staffing <coughs> committee who is um, appointed to at that staffing committee. Can I propose that we approve these? Okay, we'll propose that we approve. We have a second then, yep. Councillor Davis. All those in favour? Against? I think that's been carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Item 21 22, scheduled meetings. So we go with the top one. So this is to change the existing scheduled meetings to the one proposed as item W, thereby getting rid of the CASC committee meetings. Has everyone had sight of that? Is everyone okay with that? Councillor Hopway? Um, I just wanted to ask that the text right at the bottom, so beneath all the dates, is updated also to reflect the loss of. Task. Yes. Um, and there may be information in there that's no longer relevant because mm -hmm. it's about online meetings. So that just needs a quick review. Can we ask that the, the clerk, deputy clerk, just amends that at the bottom of it when they get the opportunity? Mm -hmm. Okay. With that proposed amendment, have we got a proposal? Councillor East, Councillor Colley, all those in favour? Thank you very much. And then. 21, 22, scheduled, oh, I've done that. 21, 22, 23, confirm representative to outside bodies. To confirm the parish council representative to outside bodies. A list of representative closed, item X. Um, I believe some of these bodies may no longer be in existence. Um, however, the councillors who are members of those and what have you, if they could, if they could feed back as we go through with them, is that, is that okay? We'll go through so Brockholes Village Trust, that's still in existence. It's usual for the council for Brockholes to be the representative for the Brockholes Village Trust, which turns out to be me. I'm quite happy to continue. Is everybody okay with me continuing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go through them all and then we'll propose and do more than one go if that's all right. Okay, Earnshaw's Foundation Challenge Day. Councillor Bella, Kath Bellamy. Yeah. Could you, have you got any information on that, Trevor? It's still and she's fine to do it. And she's still fine to do it, thank you. The Hall Trust Education Charity, that again is Councillor Kath Bellamy and Councillor Trevor Bellamy. Yeah. Okay, and you're quite happy to continue? Yes. Okay. Home Valley Community Breakfast Forum. I'm not aware that this carries on. I don't know, I don't think it's existed for several years actually. Okay, we don't believe it's existed for several years. Nope. Okay, has anyone got any difference to that? Okay, so I propose we scrub this one out unless it comes back in and then we'll... Have the, we'll uh, yep. Elect someone yeah, to that role. Okay. Home Firth Civic Hall Community Trust. Currently, we have Councillor Bellamy and Councillor D. Carey. I think and then I think we need to just uh, just to confirm that Council Parish Council representatives to outside bodies. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go on. I think there was. I think I'm going to be nominated as a trustee, as well as Councillor. Yeah, point of information. It's later on the agenda anyway. Yeah. It's it's a separate item. It is. It's a separate item 25. So that, we'll take that one. We'll that, leave. Is a, that is an existing body and it meets every month. Yeah. That. We'll leave that one out and then we'll take the voting of those separately then. So, yeah. Is that okay? And then Home Firth Conservation Group, Councillor Rachel Hogley. Um, it still exists, but it doesn't have need for. I'm, I'm no longer a, um, involved in it. Okay. It, it didn't have a, a. I was asked to join it as a parish council representative when it first formed, but it's now looks after itself. Self-sustaining, and, yeah. we do, and we, you no longer feel that we need any representation no. on that. Okay. Point of order on that one. I mean, we've established a climate emergency committee we're spending money on saving the world, and the parish council isn't interested in having representation on the uh, Home Firth Conservation Group. Okay, point taken. Would you... It's a bit, a bit sad indictment if they don't want anything to do with the council. Can we Good. ask you to... Alright, I clarify that the Home Firth Conservation Group is a 
um, body that's been involved as part of the neighbourhood plan steering group. So they're very engaged with what the council does um, and um, we have a good dialogue with them. But I don't attend regular meetings of the Home Firth Conservation Group. I would go if I were invited to speak to them on something. And I have spoken to them in the past on um, neighbourhood plan, etc. But I don't see any reason to have a formal representative since the engagement will be through the planning committee. Councillor Lewis. Uh, just, just to back up, I, I have quite a, a lot of communication with uh, the conservation group as well, uh, Mullen Chair very well. Um, so, uh, but again, I don't sit in the meetings. It's pretty much as Councillor Hardy said. If they feel there's, a, there's something I can contribute as a councillor to be a good as councillor, then you know, I'm very happy to work with them. So I don't think there is an issue. Uh, that in, uh, in that okay, so can I propose that, that regarding that, that Councillor Hogway is no longer um, stands on that committee, that committee as a representative of Home Valley Parish Council. If that committee, if that group does get in touch with us and request that one of us become sits on that committee, then we look upon it at that point. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Holland Library, charity to be established to run managed library after the uh, community asset transfer. Councillors East and Councillor Joe Sweeney. Is that still? Well, it's, 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 it is now a... Uh, that's, one of it's a that's happened, hasn't it? That's, that's so that... Yeah, I'm a trustee on the uh, charity as well. So. Okay, yeah, so you're a trustee on the charity and you attend that meeting. So that's actually happened, hasn't it? The, that needs to change, so that needs to just change to Homley Library Trust and... Friend, friends of Homley Library. Oh, friends of Homley Library, no. yeah. Is it? Well, then the trust isn't friends of Homley No, it's not oh, separate, sorry. it's trust, okay. isn't it? So, that needs to change it to so Homley Library Trust. Homley Library Charitable CAO, I don't know what the ISP stands for, but organisation. Incorporated. Are you prepared to carry on standing on that? I am, yes. Would you prepare to get in touch with the clerk and give them the, the, um, that group's correct name? And so we can update our records. Friends of Homley Library CAO. You just drop the, yeah, the deputy clerk an email. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, anyone can look at these. I think people need to know that they've got their names right at least. <coughs> okay. Um, Kirklees Council, Home Valley North Ward Forum, former area committee. Does that still meet Councillor East? It, it, the, the Ward Forums haven't met for a while, I think, since Covid, but uh, I'm quite happy to carry on with that. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> North. Does anybody else like to stand, go on to that? I think it's when COVID comes, if, if we get back to uh, yeah. some form of normality and it comes on again, the, the members should be left as they are and uh, in, they can sit on the committee when it's time, when they're right. Thank Should we come you. back to that if that happens? Yeah. I'd be interested in standing for that as well. Not even stand up as well. As well. Um, we'll I, think back I think we're only allowed one. I think um, we're only allowed one. Okay. I think you're right, Councillor Dixon. You can have a fight with um, Councillor East later on if you want. It used to be three on each, but I think it was reduced to one. Kirkley's Council, Home Valley South Ward Forum, Formal Home Area Committee. We're on that and we have Councillor Davis. As, as, a, as a ward councillor, I'm on there anyway. You're on there anyway. So, yeah. so obviously, as a, as a, as a perhaps the chairman would be kind enough to explain these particular, um, what these bodies actually do. Okay, so there are, so the forums are a group of interested parties in those areas that meet together and see if they can what they can do for that area. And it's usually people from ward councillors, yep. right? Representatives of the parish council, mm -hmm. and then there's representatives of local groups. I think there's local local housing association. I think the point the point being, it's a it's a forum for the public to be able to meet with their elected representatives. No, I don't think it's public. No, no. no. The, the public do go. No, it's a ward forum. <laughs> it's for members of the public to be able to engage with their local yeah. representatives, and it's not appropriate for a district council to be, to, to be our representative on a ward forum. Councillor Davis has already said that he's already there, he's already there already. and we'd have to appoint someone from the parish. Could it, I think, to be fair, there, you know, I understand the confusion. <coughs> there, there are if you let's call them ward alliance or for want of a better yeah. word meetings which happen between ward councillors and partners and that happens and we've had some of those and that happens in Home Valley North as well so the, the ward councillors would meet with as you say local representatives perhaps in the parish council uh, the local uh, uh, community groups police um, uh, it could also be uh, local GPs etc 
then there are public, obviously individual surgeries. Some, some boards have combined surgeries where the public can come along. And um, there have been in the past, certainly, but I don't think there have been for some time, some public ward forums as well. So I think this, this is actually, if you like, there's, all, there's three, three elements to, to this. And what I think that's referring to is the, the meeting with the partners, I believe. I believe so. Yes, so we need someone from this parish council to put themselves forward for the Home Valley South Ward Forum. Have we any takers? I've got, I've got three. <laughs> Councillor Bellamy. Uh, quite willing to do it if, if anybody wished. I'm not, uh, not pushing it, but uh, I've for many years as part of the Old Lady Committee. So I know how the, okay. I know how the system works, how it, how it uh, so you are putting yourself forward, Councillor Bellamy. Councillor Kerry, are you putting yourself forward or are you proposing something? Oh yeah, I actually used to be the officer who used to look after the area committees in the good old days. And when they met much more frequently, they gave away a lot more money. Um, so yeah, I'd be more than happy to attend and try and my best to represent the parish. Councillor Buster, are you proposing or putting yourself forward? The first of greater experience for them, Okay, so we have two willing candidates, but no one, no proposal and no... Can I hold Councillor Bellamy? Well, we're going to give most away, so that we don't have to give it away. <laughs> give them the away instead of having the... Councillor Brooks proposed propose Councillor Bellamy. Councillor Dixon? Can I propose Councillor Carrie, please? Okay, have we, have we got seconders for both of those? Yeah. Second I'll Carrie. I'll second Carrie, Trevor. Okay, second Trevor. Okay then, so all those in favour of... I'm going to go by alphabetical Councillor Bellamy. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And all those in favour of Councillor Kerry? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, is it? Seven. Okay, so it's uh, Dr. Kerry's been, in. been uh, elected to that role. Now, Kirkley's Rights of Way Forum, we have none there. Does that <coughs> meet at all? I've missed one. Oh, I've missed one. I've missed one. I'll come back to yeah. historic buildings. Kirkley's Rights of Way Forum, none. Do we know if that still meets or anything? I'm not sure if it does. <coughs> I'll get in touch with the... It was, uh, I mean, it was, it was meeting last year, um, but possibly not for some months. Okay, I'll get in touch with the... So, this meeting, does, would someone yeah. want to be the, um, the uh, Rights of Way... attend the Rights of Way Forum? Can I ask East? what does it involve? I believe it will be regarding rights of way, closing rights of way, moving rights of way, and keeping rights of way clear. Don't be unnecessary. Don't be unnecessary. I have no idea. <laughs> right, I'm, well, I'm interested. Um, I think yeah. that I think they were quarterly, or they're, they're not super regular. Right, that sounds good. Councillor Davis, I think there is a pull. Um, you know, the, the rights of way uh, team from the, the Curtis. I think there is something that is set up across. The not just from here, across Kirkley. Yeah, it's Kirkley. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's right. Yeah. Kirkley, sorry, I didn't hear that first bit. Yeah, ah, right. So, yeah, that, 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 yeah. that, does, that, that does exist, yes. Yes. As far as I'm aware. Mm. Okay. So, Councillor East has put himself, chucked his hat in the ring. Have we anyone else? Councillor Wilson? Would you like to put yourself? Yeah. Mm. Have we anybody else? So, two people who fancy it, but no one's proposed our. Uh, well, well, Councillor Wilson wants to do it then. Okay, that's it, okay. We have one. Proposal, second, uh, all those in favour, Councillor Wilson? Thank you very much. No fight in the car park needed there. <laughs> okay, Kirkley's Historic Buildings Trust. Councillor Trevor Bellamy is currently here. Uh, Would you no like to... meetings for 18 months. <coughs> currently, they don't speak, I think. Okay, are you quite uh, happy to hang it, stand in the wings and if it, and if it yeah, rises from the ashes, it, jump it, in there? It relies there. on donations in the form of grants from yeah. Kirkley's. Mm. Okay, that's Trevor Bellamy. Um, Peak District National Park Authority moves for the future project as only one of our wards resides within the um, uh, Peak District National Park. We normally have the councillors from that ward stand on that committee. Councillor Bellamy, are you happy to continue? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and then Peak Park Parishes Forum. This is a Similar to the above. Again, are you okay to stand on that? Yeah. Again, yes. The bit that's missed from the, obviously this council is part of yeah. the big bad parishes for them. 
Um, what, I, what I've been for a number of years on that is on their management group, the 50 odd um, parishes. It's, uh, it's a group of eight or nine people set the agendas, etc. I've been doing that for a number of years. Um, it's an afternoon set up, it's an half day job, as a known, yeah. once a month. So it is, um, you know, if anybody really fancy doing it. He enjoys the out the, the Are you happy, yeah. um, yeah. you're happy to continue? If you're happy to continue, then no. I think most of us are nodding and smiling, I think we're all happy for you to continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, and then Yorkshire Local Councils Association, both with voting rights, you are the current chairman, or retiring chairman, Perrix, Councillor Hogley and Councillor Bellamy. So it would move to be myself and Councillor Bellamy. Are we all, is it, no, sorry, myself Hogley. and Councillor Hogley? <laughs> are we okay to, is everyone okay to continue with that? No objections yeah. from anybody? No, no. Okie doke. Okay then, so with all those changes that we, we went through and we noted, are we okay to, all those yeah. in favour? Go, Councillor Bellamy. Can I just have one of them, please? Yeah, why not? Let's have another. Army Covenant Group, or well, Forces Covenant Group. And that, um, that came to light with an invite early doors when I was chairman, so it'd be a couple of years ago plus. Um, I attended one meeting. I've got all details of what goes on and who runs it, but there hasn't been a call since. But, uh, that was a, the initial call was to invite us to be part of that. To have a representative on that. Would you be happy to continue being a representative of, to that committee? Well, I'm there, I'm there for one. If you hear back from them, would you be happy to continue in our. Uh, unless somebody else desperately wants to do it. <laughs> well, I think if we don't know it's existed and they have called in yet, I think yeah. it's difficult. They won't like it, he must have done something good when he went. Surely not. Surely. Everyone likes Trevor. Not possible, that, is it? Yeah. He must have done, he must have done, some, done some good. <laughs> Okay, I'm quite happy for you to carry on with that. Is everybody else okay with that? Yeah. So all those in favour, we'll go that in, in one. All those in favour? We still need to come back to the uh, Civic Hall Trust. Yeah, it's less on the agenda. With the, yeah, with the admission of the Civic Hall Trust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah carry on. Okay. 21, 22, 23, to appoint authorised signatures under the bank mandates. Currently, it's councillors Trevor Bellamy, Hogway and myself. Usually each committee chair would be a mandate. Is it going to work uh, for, uh, for each of these people to say the same? Because I don't, I don't see any reason why we should change anything. Um, well, like it says, it's, it's usually all of the chairs of committees. So there's usually... I mean, as, if there's more of them, it's better, obviously, because it, it means there's more people available to sign if they're needed. So yeah. um, I'd probably appreciate it if... Well, we, we, all, I, I would, all the chairs... I, I'm going to make the suggestion that uh, um, there's only Trevor that's not a member, of, not a chairman of a committee. Um, if it was that the, it was to be chairman of committee only, uh, including the, uh, yourself, which is on down to this public sector deposit fund, uh, I would propose that we have the uh, committee chairman and Richard uh, on all these banks to, uh, accounts, and if it is that it's necessary, he then got enough people to call. On. I mean, previously the clerk was the mandatee from the officer's side for HSBC yeah. and Handel's Bank, and um, I think it's quite good if the clerk is still involved in the process, or else it just becomes, you know, they've got to be the clerk's got to be central to the to the, the process. Mm. Can I ask you not to be on the Monday, please? That's the problem. Yeah, Councillor Brook. Yeah. Sure. Anybody else want to be on the mandates? No, no he said he didn't want to be on the mandates. He doesn't want to be on it. Doesn't want to be on it. Yeah. Okay, I, can't, I can't guarantee to be around to yeah. sign checks. That's so fine. Not for... So would any of the newly appointed chairs have any objections to being on the mandates? No. I mean, the, the, only, the, only, the only one you have, ever have to do anything is the HSBC one. We've never asked anybody to sign for Handel's Bank and or CCLA, so it's more... Mm -hmm. a, Okay, so we'll just go with HSBC. Are you happy to be on the mandates for the HSBC mm. count? Mm. So it's Councillor East, Councillor Colley. Are there any others? Councillor Blacker. Yeah. Councillor Blacker. Okay. And you? Do you carry it? No, you're not. No, I'm just saying that. Oh, okay, point the finger at someone else, that's fine. 
Okay, so we can have those. Are we all okay with that? All those in favor? Yeah. Okay. I'm suggesting we don't take uh, Councillor Bellamy off, although he's not longer a chair, but he does live, reside somewhere near the town centre, doesn't he? If you're happy with that, or do you want to come off? No, it's all right. I've stood it out of here, but leave it, please. For the amount of work, it's not, it's not a problem. And okay. generally speaking, if you, if you need to talk to them or anything, you can go into the suit. Yeah. So it's a Monday to Friday daytime job. Okay. So I'm fortunate in that position as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. To a point. Homefirth Civic Hall Community Trust, this is item 21, 22, 24. Consider whether being a member of Homefirth Civic Hall Community Trust represents an interest that prevents taking part in discussion and voting at a community asset support committee. The former clerk sought a sort of advice from the monitoring officer at Kirkley's Council on this matter. The opinion is that being a trustee of Homefirth Civic Hall Community Trust does not constitute a pecuniary interest and should not prevent that council from discussing the trust's issues and voting on them at meetings of the Council Forest Committee. To approve a second trustee to Home for the Civic Hall Community Trust, the trustee would need to sit on the Service Provision Committee. So, any of the Service Provision Committee people, would you like to be a trustee on Home for the Civic Trust? Councillor Carey. Well, just procedurally, I, I was, Kath was always our, Councillor Kath Bellamy yep. was always our, our, our trustee representative, and then obviously more recently she to get along to meetings. So, I've, I stepped up. Um, and I have attended two meetings, I think, now. But um, well, I think this meeting needs to approve me formally if that yeah. meeting is happy to do, for me to stand on for another year. But there's also a, another vacancy there, and I know that um, part of the chairman... Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to sit on the Civic Trust, but not on well, uh, service provision as well. I mean, I'm not going yeah, to be on every yeah. I, I don't that. think we need... Personally, I, I don't think it... As long as you mean... I think it's, it's obvious that the service committee is looking after that relationship. It's helpful if there's somebody in the room who knows what's happening with the, the trust to speak on its behalf, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, but I think, I don't think that necessarily needs to be focused. Well, initially it was a concern of Cask. Yeah. It rose in a full council meeting when it emerged that Cask, um, all of us, had not really been on top of the detail of what was going on in the city hall, and we agreed that we should have a greater involvement trustee and therefore it was that was how it came about. Councillor Dixon. Um, I think it would be useful to have somebody part of the of the Civic Hall trustees who is um, on on finance and on service provision because finance do the grants as well. So spread the knowledge. It's all good. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Dalton. Can you just clarify the item we're voting one that um, we're acknowledging that there isn't a pecuniary interest um, uh, which prevents such a trustee from voting on matters in council as it pertains to the, yeah. the um, Civic Court Trust and the item is asking us to approve the concept that we have a second trustee on board, yeah. Yeah. not to discuss who that might be at this stage, under this item. Under this item, no. Right, thank you. But we would need to discuss whether they have yeah. to be on service provision. Indeed. Can I make a proposal to uh, Mr. Jones that we have a representative from Civic Provision and Finance to represent the Council of the Civic Hall Trust? Okay. Councillor Donald? Yeah, I think it's maybe the other way around, is it not? That we're, uh, oh, right. we're voting on whether that trustee is going to be created and then it's, um, we're stating that they would need to be a service provision. That, that's what the motion is, but yeah. it wants to propose an amendment to it. Oh. Councillor Dixon. I don't think we're creating a second person because there, were already, there, were, there was two spaces before. It's just that the council only had one person at the time who wanted to be on that group. So we're not creating anything new, Councillor Dalton. So it would just be. Um, to approve a second trustee, not approve the, the role of a second trustee, just to approve yeah. a second yeah. trustee. Well, I'm a bit confused now, but, but there, there, there already was a space for two trustees before. Yes, yes. So I'm just clarifying that point. So that's, we're not creating something new by any second person. We're kind of just going back to what we did before, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, as I said, Mr. Chair, I would like to propose that we get a representative from the finance and then one from the service provision represent the council 
was going to say, we know the creative in a position, it's already there, we just clarify where, where, where they come from. Yeah, I'll second that. As long as they aren't going to give all those money away. Okay, that sounds like a proposal. And then the, those committees then decide who their trustees are going to be from those committees when they first meet. Yes. Okay. Why, can, so yeah, why can't we just approve it tonight? Because it's mm. part of external bodies, isn't it? Maybe we've approved all the others. Yeah. Seems to mind us not to do it now. Yeah. The council the council already said you'll represent the service provision. I think that's what it says. Yeah. Dixon. Yeah, if we if we had this conversation before and when we looked at that list, we would have appointed two people, wouldn't we? So I think from that list, I think we, we should put two people forward and uh, if, if Council Call and Council Carrier want to do the jobs, I'm, I propose them to do that. Yeah. I think so Council Carrier is a as well, though. I think Kath's done a really good job on that throughout the years, but I don't know if she's able to kind of carry on doing it with the current health issues, but so that's, that's why I'd like to propose the two people, but I'd like to thank Kath for her work and the fact that I've like been the last few years. Yeah. Can we not ask Kath to speak for herself? I'm afraid she's not here to speak, unfortunately, with that, Councillor Dixon. But, uh, um, and the council business has to move on. So we have a proposal for Councillor Carey and Councillor Colling to be our trustees, and one of them is on finance, I believe, and one of them is on service provision, so that would fit that criteria. Yeah. So do we have a proposal? Proposal. Yeah. Seconded. All those in favour? <coughs> Thank you very much indeed for that. Can I ask the chair to thank, um, personally thank yes. you, Councillor Bellamy for this, uh, you know, for she has done the last four or five years on this committee, please. Can the uh, four councils thanks and appreciation for Councillor Bellamy be limited? Councillor Davis. Don't forget, we, we do need, it's been pointed out, we do need, I think, vote on this, on the fact that we, that we do acknowledge and accept that there is no pecuniary interest because that has always been a, a huge barrier in the past, so, so we, we need to put that in the way that we accept the advice of the <coughs> Okay, I mean, and that's, I, that's I a proposal. Propose, and I would propose that we do accept second it. That. Second that. So we're proposing that we, that that's how it is, but we're proposing that we agree that that's how it is. Yeah. 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 Okay, all in favour? That seems to carry, thank you. Okay, okay. <coughs> Grants. Grants does this. Home Civic Hall Trust. Consider the award of two grants to Home Civic Hall Trust, one of £30,000 towards the new toilets and office space development, and one of £10,000 towards the fire doors of Large Hall. These two grants were previously brought to the full council on the 22nd of March 2021. They were not approved by the full council at the time because no evidence was supplied by CASC of three quotations having been received, and two, there was some confusion around why HCHCT were asking for funds towards a project that had already been considered and funded by the parish council the previous year. Green Asset Support Committee sought clarification from Home Civic Hall. Trust on these matters, and I've since reconsidered the two grants requests in light of an explanatory letter from HCHCT. The council has asked to approve the grant of ten thousand to Hope Perth Civic Hall Community Trust for the replacement of the two sets of fire doors in the large hall. The council has asked to approve a grant of thirty thousand pounds to the Hope Perth Civic Hall Community Trust for a new toilet block, renovation of the downstairs area, including creation of an office and toilet room hire. Councillor Dixon, if we made the award before. What is the explanation from them telling us that uh, they've had the money but now they want it again? It gives me the impression that they've had this £30,000 awarded. Um, were they ever given £30,000? They were not. No, no. And the same with the £10,000. Have they now given us three quotes for these three words? They have. I'm not. I'm not particularly concerned about the toilet block and that. It's just ten thousand pounds. Two sets of fire doors. They're sure, very the expensive. Information. The information is in the detail, and they have got three quotes. They have there. It's it's provided there. If they haven't had the money. Cast went through this in significant detail and was content that this was a sensible amount of money properly researched, properly funded, properly costed, and that we should have granted. Councillor Don. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, this was obviously a, a previous council meeting. The £30,000, I'm still unclear. <coughs> Is this the second chunk of the second £30,000? I believe that the, uh, 
the previously they they put in a request for the thirty thousand pound, which was approved as part of the previous scheme. Since then, the scheme has changed. They never drilled down the thirty thousand pounds. This is so the thirty. It wasn't an addition. It wasn't. It's never not an additional, additional amount of money. They never took the first lot, and the the scheme changed somewhat, so they've come back to us. Well, uh, I'm glad we're now clear on that matter. Yeah. Right. Thirty thousand we haven't taken that question. Um, the, the the matter of the doors uh, and. The last time we met, it was ten thousand pounds for one set of fire doors, and obviously um, they've come back, and we've now got a um, list, so we've got three evidence of three quotations. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, we, we've um, we've got an explanation that we've got two. Um, for instance, let's take Huddersfield Joinery's quotation for uh, one repair to replacement. One was very environmentally sound attempt to renew, uh, reuse and repair, which came in at just over £1,000. Um, their more expensive price for replacement did come in at £2,900. When you add that on, it comes to, well, I haven't checked all the numbers, but it comes to £3,579.60, which was actually the lowest of the three cores. Um, we've got an explanation that we're not using any of those three companies because they couldn't start the work till early February 2021 which was um, around about five months ago. Um, so I don't know what the current state of play of, of the workload of Buddersfield Joinery, uh, or Home Valley Joinery, or CMR Joinery, which were the three quartees. But no, none of these are proposed to do the work. The fourth, this fourth one has come in on the rails for 4,758. And by the way, this is all re referring to just one of the doors, one of the double doors. Uh, anyway, we're now being asked again to approve £10,000, at least this time it's for two, uh, replacement of two doors, we've got, we've, we've got one, one door better than the last meeting for our £10,000, but this is still um, well over the odds, and it appears that we're looking at an overexpensive option, I'm still not comfortable that £10,000 is an appropriate amount of taxpayers' money to spend on repairing two dicky doors, um, which no doubt do need attention, I don't dispute that, um, but we seem to have gone all around the houses to get three quotes, mess these three companies about, and then go to a fourth company without even double checking whether they're actually available to do the work, seeing as I was five minutes later from the time that they couldn't start. Thank you for that. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that, uh, Michael, spells it out that uh, we know what's happening with regard to the toilets, with regard to the doors. I think we should have, uh, before we start, we should have ten thousand pounds. We should have three up-to-date quotes. Okay. Yeah, so these the quotes, the quotes, the quotes are out today. Can we? We have two. Them? We've two applications. Yeah. Two grant applications. One for thirty thousand pounds, and one is for ten thousand pounds. Can I take them separately? Yeah. So the one for thirty thousand pounds, which is part of a project of all told, which will be about one hundred forty thousand pounds, which they've managed to raise. They've gone into their own reserves. And they've also managed to find external funding of fifty-five thousand pounds towards that. Yeah. Are we? Um, can we can can propose propose on that? Second that. Second that. All those in favour of the toilets the toilets and the office accommodation. All those in favour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Regarding the fire doors, has any of the councillors like to put anything forward? That councillor Carey. Yes, as um, a newly appointed trustee, I guess I can speak very confidently about this in a way that I couldn't before. Um, I think we need to remember, first and foremost, is that we took on as a parish council a massive building, which was a liability. The council couldn't, Kirkley's council couldn't manage it, we took it on. They, in turn, have set up a new charity to run that, run that building. It's still our building, but we're still responsible for it. I was more than impressed with what they've managed to do in terms of turning that building around, business plans they've got, the amount of usage which they've generated, and they've managed to keep ahead of above water throughout COVID. So it's really quite upsetting really to hear, fe hear fellow councillors speak very cynically about the motives or the strategies or the incompetence of fellow volunteers who are actually looking after a building for us. And um, the debacle we had at previous meetings with the fire doors People didn't even know which door we were talking about, and it wasn't clarified at the meeting. We were talking about massive external doors on a listed building, effectively on the drill hall on that side. These are large security doors, as well as, you know, they, they are significant pieces of timber. 
Um, as you'd appreciate, the, the trustee, the all volunteers, and Judith Patrick, who I've spoken to at length in a couple of years, done a phenomenal job. I've gone out and tried to get suppliers, and it's really, really difficult to get suppliers at the moment because all the builders are busy, and you've got to get a builder that can work to a certain specification. So I have every confidence that they have got the best price for somebody who can put that door in that needs to be done, um, and I fully support it. But what I would say is, anybody who's interested, go and have a walk around the building, look at what they've done, look at what they plan to do, and look at where your money's been spent. And there's, there's, I've got some progress reports, we haven't really got time to go into it. But there is a lot of work being done, and we've, they're gearing up to getting everything ready for having um, basically back to normal practice from September onwards, really. And with the good news today, hopefully that means they can do. But there's been a, a lot of work, and, and you should expect on a building like that, there's a lot of glitches and a lot of problems because they're complicated things to do. And I just think we should have a bit more faith in them um, and respect the work that they're doing. And we have to treat it like a grant, but we, we do have to expect, look at the. the because they are external to us, but we're joined at the hip. And so I'd ask the committee, I'd ask the, the um, full council to support the £10,000 for the doors, they, they are needed. I'll second that, Mr Chair. Okay, would anyone else like to speak on that matter? I, I'd like to speak on it because it, it's all right, uh, saying it's £10,000, one thing and another. We did have three quotes previously. The three quotes were smaller, They've not gone back to these people to ask them whether they are capable of doing it at the present time. We know we've got expenditure, we know we've got all this up and the other with them, but when they are going to tell me that I go to a meeting outside the Civic Hall when we're paying all this money towards keeping that going, keeping the service, providing that service for the community, and that's why we took over the Civic Hall for the community to be told that we can just, it's the tail wagging the bloody dog. And I'm not happy. Uh, what the uh, councillor said is that we think now, and this is my, my own personal opinion, that uh, yes, we'll pay for the doors, but we don't want to be paying this £10,000 if it is that other people were prepared to do similar work uh, as it would have been in this year for £3,000, why wasn't it done and why wasn't it got on with during Covid when the place was closed? And they could have got it done for a third of the cost. And they could have got it done at the time when those other parties said they could have done it. Somebody has neglected the job because at that time, when it was said March or whatever this year, if it had been decided to get on with it and they were giving it the word go, we could have granted the money for that and got it paid for and the work could have been done. Thank you for that contribution. We didn't, we didn't approve it that time because we didn't have enough information. Councillor Dixon. I'd just like to second the proposal about uh, giving the 10,000. Oh. Can I just make a, just Councillor, a question? No. That, uh, yes, they have got three quotes, but it was not our requirement that they got the because they, we asked them to give us a, you know, what they, they asked type of grant, it's their own thing that they go for the free grant uh, quotes. It's, uh, we didn't ask them to give free quotes to us, it's just what they come back to the information from us. Councillor Dalton, and then we're going to move yeah, to the There grant. is no evidence that we've got three quotes for the work that the grant is proposed um, to undertake. We've had three quotes for the repair and and or replacement of one set of, set of doors from Gunspill Joinery for CMA, uh, CMJ Joinery or CNR Joinery and Home Valley Joinery. There's a fourth quote being obtained from Beardsells. Beardsells have gone back to, uh, 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 they've gone back to Beardsells for a single quote on the second replacement of the second or repair of the second doors. Now according to the numbers we've been presented, 840 quid will repair one set of doors um, I think they've been a bit optimistic with the 140 quid being sold for repairing the other set of doors. But Huddersfield Joinery, for instance, 1,200 plus pounds plus VAT. And we'll come back to the VAT on a, a, why we're paying VAT on holistic building repairs. Yeah, that's, that's a secondary issue. Um, but uh, 10,000 pounds, why are we proposing? I mean, Councillor Dixon has obviously proposed just to run through 10,000 pounds out of the council coffers. For, for repairing two doors, I mean it's it's ridiculous, and it's not our money. 
It's the taxpayers' money. Oh, who, who was the quote from this last quote? I didn't get. Be it so, FMB. I mean, they're all local companies. Oh, FMB. That's fine. By the way, they're all being asked to quote different things, and there isn't. There are three quotes for the proposed works to be done. <coughs> be it so appears to be the only contractor who've been actually asked to provide quotes for the whole for the whole work. And if we take the generous quotes of repairing the job, we can get it done for less than a thousand pounds, which the clerk can approve without any much. Without even asking us, I'm afraid the clerk can't repair it because it's not it's, it's not in the clerk's remit to repair. It's in Home Valley. It's in Home Valley Civic Hall Trusts. Yeah, they they run the management and the repair of the building. Oh, we it's, could be. It's the grant application. Those. It's the grant application that's come to us. We'll either approve it or no. Have we got an amendment? Have, has anyone got an amendment to the proposal that's in front of us to the grant application? We are. Uh, Propose that we approve the um, £840 and the £140 for the prepare of the doors that we've got. You know, if that's the way, the way that the, the community they want the doors fixing, we've got quotes to fix them for 140 quid and 800 and whatever it was, like 840 quid. That, that sounds like a. Is that a an amendment, amendment Councillor Dalton? Yeah. Okay, we have a second. Have we got someone who's going to second that? Councillor Dixon Senior second that. Could point Could, clarification? I think, because I think there's some. So the conclusion of all this that the, there is the external fire doors and there are internal doors. I think I believe the council might be talking about the internal doors. It, or correct me if I'm wrong, because the, the, the more expensive items in the external fire doors, that's what it leads to me. We can probably find this in this in cask communities. Just just to clarify, if we looked at uh, uh, Page 158, it refers to the fire exit doors with a sum of £4,003 <coughs> plus VAT and then, then to paint, uh, etc., £420. And then it also refers to doors inside the main hall um, to carry out repairs to the short doors leading to storage area, etc., etc., for the sum of £140 plus VAT. So there are two, there are two different things here the, the expensive items and the external, as far as I understand, are the external. That's what I propose. Have we got an, uh, this is what's going to happen from Cal the from Councillor the Dixon has Councillor Dixon has seconded Councillor Dalton's amendment. Vote. Can we take a vote on the amendment? All those in favour of Councillor Dalton's amendment? Three. All those against that amendment? Okay, that amendment is formed. Thank you for your contributions. Um, then, so we now vote on the actual motion as written that we're going to go for the uh, support of this grant application for £10,000 for um, the doors. If this is the, the way it's going to carry on, if Councillor Carey is going to be on that committee, he's going to be giving money. Thank you for your contribution, Councillor Dixon Senior. Council. We're going to have a vote. Thank you. Um, our vote. It's our vote. We've got can, we can we go to a vote and not an argument, please? Jesus. The There's no need to blaspheme. Can we just move to a vote, please, Councillor? Okay. We've got a proposer and seconder. All those in favour? Thank you. Gary. Just recall the uh, votes against, please. Yes, please. Your standing orders are that if you want to record a vote, you should make that away before the actual vote. Yes. Could you give the uh, councillors an opportunity to vote against the motion, please, Mr Chairman? Those who would like to vote against. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, we're now on to... Oh, where am I? 26. 26, yes, we are. Thank you. 26, Honda Library, to approve the preparatory heads of terms of the lease for Honda Library, Friends of Honda Library, and the outline of terms for the granting of the licence of Kirkley's Library Service, Vice Agreement for the Kirk Terms for Kirkley's Library. To approve the heads of terms for the lease of Honda Library to the Friends of Honda Library. Has everybody seen this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, has anyone got any comments, anything you want to put forward? Okay, to approve the head of terms and to approve the license terms of Kirkley's Library Service to the Honda Library, which will be under license issued HVPC 7. Said. Just for the whole thing, uh, my cabinet portfolio library is now sit under me, so I don't know, I don't think that causes an issue with this vote, but it does, they do sit under me. I can't hear that. Councillor Davis is saying that his uh, library is now put all under his portfolio as a Kirklees councillor. So li library is and I've not been involved in any decision making on this, this is previous to me being the cabinet then, but so I don't believe there's any issue. Okay. But just being moved. Thank you. Okay, we've got a proposal, have we a second though? Okay. Um, those in favour? That looks to be carried, thank you very much. Okay. We've done the ground for, for um, item 21, 22, 27. Um, 21, 22, 28. Are we yeah, we did them all together. Okay. I believe. Did the, yeah. Nice for both of you. The head of terms, the prepared head of terms, and the okay. yeah, license. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, item 21, 22, 27. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've done 27. 21, 22, 28. I believe we're deferring to uh, an extraordinary council meeting on. No. Oh no, oh no, it's the widening of the road, isn't it? The virtual inquiry into footpath 60 is to take place on 24th of August 2021. Um, the council meeting has been running for more than two hours now, and uh, we should really defer all other items till another time. Mr. Chairman, can I propose that we cancel carry on the meeting till half past nine so we can get this agenda done? Thank you. I'm afraid, that, um, as far as I'm aware, the public open session doesn't in, isn't included in the two hours of the council meeting, so therefore I think we still have a little bit of time left. I propose I'll go to half past nine, Mr Chair, to make sure we go through the agenda. Okay. I do know that we, um, we need to be leaving the building at half past nine, so I'm doing an endeavour to get there for half past nine, but... Uh, <coughs> you the job. Thanks for those uh, points of information, both Councillor Donaldson and Councillor Brook. So, public inquiry regarding the Department of Transport will inquiry into footpath 16. The Parish Council has been asked whether we wish to participate in the process additional to the documentation that has already been submitted to consider whether Parish Council should participate in the pre inquiry inquiry, just the inquiry, or neither. Chair, I'm planning to report. Okay. I'll just, um, with permission, Chair, I'll just come forward and <coughs> speak to people be behind me. Okay. That's fine. Thank you, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I'll be brief anyway, of course. Um, you, you've had the, you've, you've obviously had the documentation. It's item BB in your pack, uh, which was a copy, a copy of an email. Um, so we're being asked whether we wish to uh, participate in the uh, public inquiry and also in the pre, the pre meeting for the public inquiry. Just, just to kind of set very, very quickly, just to set what, what this was about. Um, we have discussed this several times in the planning committee and we've also discussed it in full, full, uh, full um, council as well um, and we agreed um, to send um, a letter to, to the Department of Transport to the uh, inspector which was sent on the 11th of September, last 11th of September, um, objecting to the diversion of this, of this footpath. Um, it was the subject of a lot of um, dismay and a, not a great many objections from members of the public and, and other organisations as well. Um, and Kirk, Kirk Lee's um, objected to, to the diversion of this footpath. Um, you, you might remember that the, um, a representative of the, land, um, the landowner who was seeking the change came and spoke, came and spoke both to planning committee and also to full council uh, and gave us erroneous information which was that we would be required to attend uh, the, the public inquiry um, and that we might be liable to, to pay for some, some of the costs. It was threatening. 
<laughs> we had a we had a, a an email on the 27th of April uh, saying that was that was not the case. There was no obligation to attend, um, and our ob our objection has been passed on to the inspector. And indeed, I checked there today on on the website for the inquiry. Um, it is there along with 54 other objections. <coughs> And in case you're interested, there were 11 supporters of, of, the, of the proposal. Um, so what I'm, what I'm suggesting um, is, is that, that there's really no need for us to attend uh, the public inquiry. Uh, we made our points um, in, our, in our written submission, um, and they were, re they were based the same as, as, the, as many of the other um, objections that um, I read. Uh, and, and they're based around two things, really. One is, one is that this is a historic... Um, you know, it's a historic route um, and um, we, we wish to maintain it for, for the use of local people. And the second one was about the danger across the rerouting suggested by the landlord required people if they wanted to go up to Wolfstone Heights, not just to cross the road, but to walk for a fairly long way along a very busy road. So I am proposing that we don't um, g um, take part in the inquiry. We've made our... We've made our uh, position perfectly clear and I don't think there's any point in, in doing anything more at this point. Mary, thank you. do you think it would help if we went to the pre meeting if, and then if there was anything else that cropped up that you would be in a position well, to the, then report back? I think the pre, the pre meeting is just a, a, a kind of preparation for the, for the, um, for the inquiry, for the uh, formal inquiry. I was just concerned that we might, might glean more from that knowing that we're not going to be representing at the uh, full meeting uh, if we went to the, uh, present something to the pre-inquiry uh, and then gave whoever uh, the authority to act on our behalf. Oh, I think it comes as a package, you go to the pre-meeting and then you go, you go, then you go to the inquiry. I don't think there's anything to add <coughs> to the um, submissions that have been made by, um, by other organisations and individuals. Councillor Kay. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has seen this. I, I used to get some emails as part of my work on the, the land charity, but I've had an email today that's come from the council, from the legal officer, and basically they've passed an act, or they're wanting to enforce an act, and it's out for consultation, which not only people might be aware of events have moved on a little bit, and the, the landowners narrowed the path. Well, that's, to <coughs> that's a different... Why that's a different get... thing. That's a different. That's a different application. That, that diversion is part of that same property, and they were trying to. It, it is, but it's so two the separate diversion processes. Is to stop people using the path. There's an order now to reinstate that path that is original. Yeah, but that's not covered under public inquiry. Yeah. This public inquiry is that they're, particular they're, matter. They are related issues. They are related. It's the same piece of land. Stands, then, then basically you've got right of access down that track to its original way. So the thing they were trying to achieve with the diversion is getting the water in there, isn't it? Well, well no, should no. be 1.2 metres, and that's all that's going across that. Councillor Hogley, Councillor East. So, Councillor Hogley, first. Um, I was just going to second um, Councillor Blacker's proposal that we don't, yeah. don't attend. Which is what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Although, can we have a vote then? We've got a proposal and a second. All those in favour? Well, that looks to me like it's carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay. Item 21, 22, 29, schedule of payments to approve the month to date schedule of payments for July 2021 to date. Has anyone got any comments on the schedule of payments? Do we move it? Yeah. Okay, we've got a proposal second there. Yeah. yeah. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Okay, to know the Deputy Clerk Harry for has notified residents via the Council Notice Board website that the Parish Council has unaudited accounts for 2021, 2020, 2021. Are available to view. Is okay. that noted? No. Yeah. 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 Um, item 21, 22, 31. Councillors to contribute to a review of the code of conduct with Kirkley's monitoring officer. The council is to nominate two councillors who are willing and able to contribute to Kirkley's council review of code of conduct working with the Kirkley's monitoring officer. <coughs> have we any proposals? I said earlier I was willing if nobody else would do it. You've got a job. <laughs> I'm willing. Okay, so um, I'd like to propose Councillor Walker. I'd like to say I'm in. Okay, thank you. So we've got one proposal, Councillor. Sorry, Tom. Who are you proposing? Councillor, before you go, I'd like to propose Councillor Walker and Councillor Holloway. Second that. Have we any other proposals? 
Are you eligible to represent the council and outs outside bodies? Councillor The council is to nominate two councillors who are willing and able to contribute to Kirkley's council's review of the code of conduct. Now, I don't know if there's any other councillors. It's not official board, it's only voluntary. Then I. Uh, if there are, I'd like to hear about it. Um, and I think that'd be ideally placed to give feedback to the Kirkley's monitoring officer. Okay, so we have three people. Well, I'm convinced that the previous decisions of this council, that Council Dalton takes no part in any other business other than the town of Council meetings to be previously made up. So that would exclude him from being a representative of us in any other forum, in any other meeting, in any other external body. Right, the board. Council Dalton? Yes, as was clear in the former <coughs> Code of Conduct um, <coughs> to the Parish Council, which was removed in December. Uh, 2019 um, after certain events in the council um, somebody's just spoken in a council meeting who is not a member of this council he's a co-opted member of the council and that's he's not a full member of the council and that's uh, bigger the we have three we have I think we've discussed it through have we got any other people who would like to propose anyone to be on this um I can the, suggest that we take a vote then. The person who wants on it can go ahead, and the person who's not going to be able, unfortunately, not be asked to do it, it acts gracefully and say thank you. I think we'll take a vote. Yeah? If it turns out that somebody is not eligible to be on that committee, and we'll take, we'll take clarification from the Kirkley's monitoring officer, and what have you, at that stage, and what have you, then we may have to submit somebody else. But currently, we have yeah, three people. Board, this, this isn't for them to decide. We, as a parish council, made a decision about where and how Councillor Dalton would be represented. That is something that is on the record. There wasn't an end date for that. I think, well, if there was an end date, it was term of office. Proper, so that stands. Proper that, that doesn't stuff. mean, that, yeah. is not for, that is not for Kirklees to tell us whether we can or can't do that. We've made a decision. I think it's currently, no, it's turned up to April 2022, I believe, is that right? Yeah, May 2022. May, May 2022. Right, so, so that means that yeah. person couldn't attend that meeting before May 22. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So that's, so that's the decision. So that cannot be, you cannot take a nomination from the floor, with respect, Chair, for somebody to take a position when they're already banned from taking any office. As, 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 as far as I'm aware, the ban doesn't stand you from being elected. I believe it does stand them from taking up that role. Uh, Mr. Chair, to save to a, to save the vessel, I believe that, I believe that is the back. situation. Well, I'm going to take my nomination back. I believe we should move to a vote. I would be representing the council on any such interaction. I'd be representing uh, the public. No, it's the representative of this council. Well, if that's how you read the item on the agenda, Chair, I will see to that you're reading on it. Councillor Brook has informed me that he's withdrawn his nomination. To say this argument, because it's a silly argument, we don't need to go, we just want to go home. Can I remind our councillors that this uh, meeting is being recorded? So we have two councillors, two nominations now, and two posts, so therefore uh, we'll just take a vote of those um, going forward. Those in favour of Councillor Blacker and Councillor Colley being our representatives? I believe that's carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> I believe that concludes our business. Thank you all for your attendance and uh, coming along. Cheers, thank you. Thank you.